Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to EGFC. My name is Quantum Deathcat and I'm here with Chag. We're starting a little bit late, 15 minutes behind schedule, but with all the things that have happened, Jag, we're finally here and we're finally here to play some Rocket League. Absolutely, we are ready to see some great Rocket League action. We're starting off today with DePaul University versus Fairfield University, two teams that have been near the upper echelons of the middle, I would say, of this Rocket League collegiate season. Uh, last week, DePaul were able to sweep Niagara, Fairfield, they won via forfeit. So both these teams are coming off wins in their own right. But today, I'm sure Fairfield, they're going to be itching to get a win of their own merit. Yeah, Fairfield is one of the top teams for sure. DePaul on their good day can beat one of the top teams, but uh, they're they're a bit inconsistent in my opinion. So if DePaul can come out here with a really good game, they could surprise Fairfield. And uh, honestly, this is going to be a match. I don't think this is a sweep whatsoever. Yeah, already we're going to see DePaul in the blue, Fairfield in the red, which works out great with their color schemes. And already DePaul being very aggressive off the opening kickoff. I agree. Does have a bit of a better record. Does have a little bit of a better, uh, you know, strength of schedule so far from the opponents they've beaten. But DePaul, you know, if they play up to their opponent's skill, they could have a bit of an upset here today. Yeah, definitely. DePaul is a, a very strong team and should not be underestimated here as that ball almost goes in. That's a great save by Jocko as it gets cleared out. As you said, DePaul are starting off a little bit more uh, aggressive here. They definitely want to throw, uh, throw Fairfield off. Yeah, they do indeed. And so far, Fairfield, they've been struggling to get out of their own end of the field, which is good if you're DePaul because, you know, you want to make sure that they don't get any scoring opportunities or at least not as many as you get yourself. But so far, no goal, no shots really on goal. Just oh, yet, but oh, this is wide get... open. No, it's not. It's wide and Shakuki can't do anything about it other than try and pass it back. Misses and Elysia picks it up. Shakuki does keep it in. Lavish pops it up. I might go over to... Oh, Yako, that is so close. How close is that for Jocko? Right off the crossbar and doesn't go in. That might... It doesn't, though. It's saved at the last second by Elysium. And DePaul now, they're getting shot after shot, but they're just missing by such a narrow margin. Those are the ones you want to have back later on. Yeah, later on, you're... Oh, wow, the blows are coming in, right? These guys are just trading punches at this point. Shot after shot for both of these teams. They're not staying in the midfield. They're both taking advantage uh, when they have ball possession. And now Fairfield's finally starting to get something going. They're finally starting to get a little bit of attacking positioning. <laughs> the, the, immediately the ball goes back to their end, but now they've kept it on the side of DePaul for a little bit. There's going to be a bit of a misplay, but that might not matter. It just barely misses the right-hand corner. Yeah, I saw that Elysium was in the net trying to bump the player out of the way was going to make that say sadly that did not come through that's a little bit high and Jocko's shot is just a little bit weak and Elysium once again another save and the saves are just happening here for both these sides they seem neck and neck yeah this this is a very close game so far and usually all the games we see is we see one team that kind of just overpowers another team at the very beginning but there is going to be a little bit of overpowering as DePaul finally is going to break the 0-0 game Took them almost half of this first match to do so, but finally just, oh, look at that Elysium, just barely missing the block there. It's gonna be DePaul going up 1-0. He got the clear out, but that that positioning for from Lavish was just way too good. And Elysium just gonna be kicking himself there, just better positioning, got Lavish the goal. It did indeed, and unfortunately that's what happens when you stack the goal a little bit too much. Uh, I feel like a lot of the time when you've got two or three people just waiting there, everyone's going to take the same angle and no one's ever going to get it. Oh wow, look at that! Chaco is there waiting for Shakuki's shot. Shakuki faked the shot here. This is very much so a pass. Uh, Shakuki sees that there's no one there on the, right, on the left side, and Chaco is going to be there in time. That is a beautiful set play. It is indeed, and it reminds me a lot of what you might be seeing in hockey, you know? Uh, you yes. have the goalie looking one way, and then immediately the ball goes the other, and that's going to be another one just going right over the top. So Cookie coming alive here after about two minutes of nothing from either side. Just a lot of back and forth, no one able to score, and now three very quick back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals for DePaul, and they have opened this wide open. DePaul is a very, very momentum-based team, right? They have... Uh, when they don't have the momentum, they can nosedive very quickly. But when they do have the momentum, they definitely ride with it. That's what makes them so scary. They're a streaky team as Elysium almost finds the back of the net. 
kind of be cleared out. And Lavish is gonna pass it down for Shakuki. The shot's on net. It's 4-0, and there's been a goal nearly every 20 seconds since the start of this. Yeah, now now the scoring has really picked up, and it's been incredibly one side. And you know, we talk about how Fairfield kind of is coming in as the better team, but you got you got to think about the fact that not only did they get the forfeit win last week, the last time they played was actually a loss, the University of Colorado, and a 1-3. To talk about momentum, they really haven't had time to build momentum the last few weeks at all. Yeah, but you're you're talking about the University of Colorado, the ones who uh, who swept Maris, the team who had the least amount of losses after the uh, after the autumn split, right? You had Maris with only four losses for the entire eight games, right? So out of all the, 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 the games that they had, they only had four losses in total. And just that one game brought them to seven, right? So they practically doubled their loss count in one game, and that was just to Colorado. And so... Colorado beating these two teams. I'm I'm going to be very happy to see what they can do tonight. Uh, but they are going to be playing later on. Yeah, right now in this match, it looks like the Paul has all but sealed up at least this first match victory. It is a first to three, so there's still a lot of Rocket League to be played here. But Fairfield, if I'm them, I want to get something going. I want to get at least one goal just to build up a little bit of rhythm going into the next one, you know, just speeding up the tempo a bit. And they've had chances. There have been shots on goal. Um, but again, we talked about those missed opportunities early on and how you might be regretting them later. And so far, they're going to be really regretting it because they've been shut out. <gasps> what an opportunity! Oh my goodness! Look at this! Shakuki gets under this ball here and passes it up to Jocko. Oh my goodness gracious! Is that luck or is that skill? I, I don't know. It, it just feels like the way the ball bounced there, it was just perfectly like right off of both teammates cars it doesn't matter you're, you're not gonna care if it's luck or skill that's gonna be another goal and again you're just running it up even more now that that does look like another hockey play right that looks like a, a teammate just uh letting it right just passing it back and someone's already reared up for the slap shot and here you go jocko and his teammate lavish with the body check but your cookie's gonna put it in after lavish made the save here this is great team effort. Look at that. Jocko just faking out to Elysium, absolutely getting bumped out to Narnia. And it being put away by Shakuki. Not only that, but that's going to be the hat trick. Three goals on six shots, shooting at 50% right now. Not a bad stat to have at all. Now there's only 15 seconds, and they are not done. They want to go for more, and more they will get. And now it's 7-0 Fairfield. They're going to be reeling a little bit going into that next matchup, but... That might motivate them more than ever, honestly. Like, if you run out the score on your opponent, uh, that might just give you the fire you need to come back for the second matchup. Absolutely, and I agree with the gutter in the in the chat here. Brutal is the perfect word for this. Uh, there is no mercy on the side of the Topal team. No mercy hey, at all. Nothing. Hey, this uh, Fairfield team just wants this to go to, to game two here, and... Oh my goodness, Fairfield. Like I said, when Nepal is on their day, they can absolutely kill it. But uh, they're a very momentum-based team, and this time around, just Fairfield had nothing to work with. The momentum was not in Fairfield's favor at all. It's been entirely in Nepal's hands, and now with that, the ball might... Do they get another goal before time expires? No, it's oh. going to hit the ground. So no, no nine goals yet, but two hat tricks. On the side of DePaul, another player with two goals. Overall, a very strong effort from them to open up this series. And Fairfield, they've got a lot of work cut out for them if they're going to be able to match this later on. Yeah, I agree. And if DePaul can continue doing this compared to uh, the Fairfield, right? Fairfield had their chances. And that's what I noticed during this game was that the ball was never in the midfield, right? There was no battle in the midfield, no ping-ponging around. When someone had the ball... They brought it into the offensive zone and they had opportunities each and every time. And we're going to jump straight into game two here. Let's see if it continues that way or if we are going to have a much more tight game like we had in the first half of game one. All right, you're seeing DePaul starting this just how they started the last one off. Win the kickoff, get very aggressive early on. But Fairfield, they're going to take it back a lot earlier than they did last time. But immediately it is cleared. And I think you had a very interesting point about midfields. And still, it doesn't really seem like there's any, like, 50-50 battles going on. Just some aerials, but nothing no, nothing really happening there. It's just usually going back and forth to either side of the field. That's a great save by Matter. 
who stops that one from going in. It seemed like there was a lack of saves at the end there in the, the last two minutes for, for Fairfield. So it's great to see that the saves are coming back in. Elysium trying to get a bump on to Lavish there. But the offensive uh, chances here, once again, look at this. They're keeping up with the offense. Once they have ball of possession, they're going straight into offense and they're not being stopped by the Paul. So if they're able to take advantage of that, they could find a few quick goals here. And the Paul just has not been able to clear it out in a while. This is the most aggressively seen Fairfield consistently do on their attack. And of course, as soon as they say that caster curse it, they immediately flip it back to defense. But I mean, that's what they need. They need to keep it out of their zone as much as possible. It's not even necessarily like running up the score like DePaul did. It's all about possession and playing the clock already. A minute 20 gone. Again, no one has scored just yet. So starting off very similar to the last match, the biggest difference is that Fairfield has a lot more chances so far. That's a great save by Soccer Scout as well. Fairfield have had a few chances, but Jakuki puts it in. And that's the first goal for DePaul. It takes a minute and 30 for the first one to be found, but it's 9-0 in the series so far. No goals yet for Fairfield. Ouch. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, when you look at it that way, it's it's really rough, but you gotta focus, I think, more on this match in particular, where it's only 1-0 right now, where it's very winnable. So, you know, if you come back and win this, who cares about the score differential? Because that doesn't mean anything at the very end of the day. What matters is actually getting the match win, but that is not gonna be easy as, it, it just seems like DePaul, they start out a little slow every time, and then all of a sudden, they just rain down the pain. It's another goal of a scored very quickly for DePaul to make it 2-0. The demo forces uh, Scout here to go for the play up the wall. Gets there a little bit late, and thus will miss that ball. And look at this! This is an alternative kickoff, and that allows DePaul to win it! And to absolutely do it, normally it's left that goes. This time, Lavish tells his teammate, just go for it. I'm going to go for mid left here. And then just boosts with that ball and brings it home. No one expects that change up to happen. Oh my goodness gracious. That is a goal. And that is how you score. That's how you start it off. Yeah, they're just firing on all cylinders right now. DePaul, I, I, again, like, it's only 3-0, and there's three minutes left, and I'm wondering how many more goals they can get now. Fairfield's still struggling to really find enough shots. I, I think the thing is they're moving the ball down the field, but they can't really follow up. Meanwhile, DePaul, they're having some great crosses just from player to player, some great passes that have led to some amazing goals. And the defense for Fairfield, they're all looking the same way. So once that ball goes across and they, they're just caught looking the other way, they can't get back in time. They can't rotate quick enough to actually stop it from going through. That's a nice save by Chaco as well on Matter. Not giving them anything to go with. No momentum is on this Fairfield side. They must be so frustrated. After only seven and a half minutes of Rocket League, they've not been able to find anything. And it's 12-0 in the series already. Yeah, and, and I think this is the problem with the fact that Fairfield couldn't score last time, is that they had nothing going for them at all in that last game. I mean, I, I think the biggest win is that they didn't allow that goal at the last, like, second. That's not because they were in position to block it, it's because the ball hit the ground. And there, there wasn't nine goals allowed, only eight. That's just a small victory. You've got to find some sort of, you know, mental fortitude off of that. And right now, they are the exact opposite of doing that. They are right now, I would say, a, a bit bit frustrated from the looks of it. Yeah, and you see that in the way that they're rotating, actually. You see a lot of double commits. You see a lot of just mistakes that you wouldn't normally see out of Fairfield. So Fairfield seemed tilted. I think that's the best way to, 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 say, it, to say it, right? They just seem out of their game. And that's amazing for DePaul. DePaul just absolutely have taken them to out of their regular mindset that they've had for the first half of the season and with these few losses that they've had one to colorado and well it's looking like it's going to be a loss here to depaul unless they absolutely pull out a miracle 90 seconds here and if they can't find a win they need a reverse sweep yeah the reverse sweep it's definitely still possible but again it's all about getting that one or two goals near the end maybe you don't win this one maybe it does go down to that sudden death scenario if you lose but you got to get something on the board because right now they're just laying goose eggs Nothing's coming through on the attack. Not enough. I mean, you see there are only one shot on goal. So far for that player, we're looking at very closely, very quickly. But now they might have an opportunity. They might. Will it come through? No, it won't. It'll be cleared out. And just like everything else they've tried, it's been not worthless, but um, gutless, I want to say. It's 5 nothing. Yes, they've had the opportunities. 
but they, it, it's, they don't have the drive that DePaul has right now. Look at this, and that's completely wide open. They've double committed out. They're not rotating properly. They're missing something. They're missing something. They're missing someone, I think. It just doesn't seem like the Fairfield team that got uh, the seven and one start. That's just how it be sometimes, unfortunately. I mean, you're a college student, there's a lot going on in your life, and it's not any easier of the pandemic being an esports athlete, but right now, Fairfield, gotta get something going. I think you said they were a bit tilted. I think maybe boom would be the proper word. You know, I, I don't think they're necessarily angry, but it's just you can tell their play isn't nearly as put together right now as DePaul. Unfortunately, oh DePaul is gonna get another goal, and again, like they're just gonna run up the score a bit more and. I think if we're keeping track of the score throughout the entire series, now it's going to be 14-0. Yeah, and that's an unfortunate bounce. Somehow it bounces off of Matter, who should have made the save here, honestly. Fairfield are just getting Rocket League at this point, right? Shakuki demoed someone after getting bumped. Uh, that that shouldn't have happened, right? That that should have been Fairfield's demo instead of Shakuki's demo, right? So it, it, it just little things like that. The, the small things, the small losses that will tilt you in Rocket League. And it, all it takes is one really bad game to get you off your off your game. They can't even find one goal. They can't find each other on the field. And Fairfield, oh my goodness, this is as lopsided as it gets here on this, on this uh, pitch. Yeah, it is. It is. It is not what Fairfield wanted to start out with. I think the thing about the first matchups, you kind of have to push it aside because all the team... A lot of time, if you're playing for the first time, you're just trying to feel out your opponent, see what their play style is, see how you can counter it better. But it's that second matchup where if you aren't able to do much in there, I think that's where you feel like it's game over because you can't change that much between the second and third one. If you've already, you know, changed up your strategies, if you tried playing a different way to counter your opponent and it's still not working out after that second one, you really got to go to the drawing board, maybe go back to basics, maybe just figure out, you know, where are we messing up? Because sometimes it's not necessarily what your opponent's doing, it's what you're doing. And I think right now, um, not a lot of team play is the biggest thing for Fairfield. Uh, the passes just have not been nearly as much on point in DePaul. They've just been able to slide by of some amazing feats of Rocket League play that they really shouldn't have gotten away with. Look at this. The net's completely wide open after the demo. Instead of regrouping and, and properly rotating, that just turns into a shooting opportunity that almost goes in. The crossbar saves it, and no one's in the net again, right? This shot is coming in. You see them passing it. Look at this. These passing plays are absolutely nuts. How is there no one in the net here? Like, Soccer Scout is absolutely out of position. They're just not able to time it enough. Barely misses it. Just goes a little bit too high. Tries to clear it out. And that's the closest. That's the fastest, actually, that we've seen from DePaul. And scoring-wise, this is the first time we've seen them score of in a minute after the match had started. So already starting out just like they have, but doing it even faster. They might not want to give away, but they oh, might no. give away their first goal here. That was actually going in, but the redirect goes off of the mark. And that that's even, oh my goodness. The, the more that time passes with these opportunities not going in for, oh, there you go. Finally, Soccer Scout's going to find one. But, uh, oh my goodness. It's just the way that Fairfield have lost, right? Fairfield, it was expected uh, of DePaul to, to win a game here or two, right? But not that dramatic right because DePaul they, they didn't beat up Manhattan this badly right Fairfield right now are just have not shown up to the way that we know Fairfield can yeah, is this the time for a comeback we always said the reverse sweep is possible looking for their second goal but it's not gonna be up to DePaul you gotta realize you know they can't just sit back and play defense right now it's basically a 0-0 game as it's 1-1 so they gotta keep on the attack they can't just live they give up easy takeovers like that they can't give away takeaways and right now it looks like they're struggling a little bit more this is DePaul really for the first time having to play a lot more defense than usual but oh they're just gonna carry it in and they're not gonna get the second goal just yet they're they're trying like I said there's not a lot of midfield play for either team right now and if we could see that back and forth uh tennis play that we normally see out of uh the meta right now in Rocket League where it's, it's very much so a counter-attack game. But right now, I mean, ju just look at the ball possession from DePaul. They're not giving the ball away. And they are making passes, not making mistakes. And right now, that's the biggest fault for, for Fairfield right now. 
It's the biggest takeaway. It's the fact that they've been making so many rotational mistakes, right? Meanwhile, the Paul here are vibing so hard that they can find each other no matter where they are on the field. They are vibing, but again, this isn't as dominant as they have, and they started out things very quickly, but since then they've quieted down and almost making a mistake there, but Shakuki able to get the ball away at the last second. I mean, things are, I wouldn't say they're dire because you are up 2-0, but things can snowball very quickly where you have this great lead, you know, then you allow your first goal, and all of a sudden you find yourselves down, and then things kind of become a reversal of fortune. So obviously we're not there quite yet, but for DePaul, oh my goodness, that is a... Oh, that's an own goal. That is a Rocket League goal. If I've ever seen one, how does this even find its way in? It goes down and... How? Just the how? Just bounces it in. I think they were trying to go for the save there off of the crossbar. They mistimed it a little bit. And that, there's the first slate we've seen for Fairfield as well as the first two goals we've seen from them all matched up. So now DePaul, they really got to put pedal to the metal if they don't want to give up this 2-0 series lead and go to a match four. Yeah, but there you go. The game is tied once again. Honestly, the ball just have looked so much stronger. Fairfield have no reason to still be in this game right now. You know, you give up a little bit of room. You, you get a bit too comfortable with your lead, and that's what can happen sometimes. You don't want to be overconfident. It's not over till it's over. Not going to call it a comeback just yet, but right now, again, it's like a 0-0 game uh, because it's 2-2. So exactly. next goal breaks the lead and that's the closest we've seen it all day so the fact that Fairfield is putting up a fight to Paul we, we talked about how they're a momentum team right so they give up some momentum here and that might be the end of the road later on that almost goes in Jocko gets another one that goes off the crossbar but that one from Shikuki that's just another lucky bounce goal this one's a 50 and it just goes off of the ceiling and that that's as far down and in as you can find in Rocket League Remember, I saw sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and that time it was just extremely lucky. Wins the 50 50 toss up. Somehow, some way goes right off the roof and goes straight into the net, but you'll take those any day of the week, especially in this third matchup of our stage, which has been the closest thus far. And again, DePaul, they are not done yet. They're back on the attack. It's 3 to 2 with DePaul having that so much more ball control, and when they do give it away, they're able to rotate properly back on defense. They've let in two really weird goals so far. It's it's not really the the product of oh my goodness you, you you see what I mean. It's not really the product of Fairfield getting getting their act together. Because if that would have gone in, I would have eaten my own words there. But they're, they're not in proper positioning. There you go. Soccer Scout's gonna tie up the game here. That's a nice flick up. But 66 seconds on the clock. A nice counter-attack goal after DePaul got way too comfortable. Shikuki giveth, Shikuki taketh away. Two goals that they could have stopped both times. They go in and tied up once again. So DePaul got really lucky the last time on their goal. Now the question is, can they get another one in? Or are we going to be going to overtime for the first time today? It will be interesting to see what happens if we go into overtime. Uh, this DePaul team started off 15 straight goals. Uh, that uh, went in and right now they've scored 18 in total in the series but uh, sorry um, 17 in total in the series but they scored 15 straight and finally Fairfield have found their footing somewhat right they found uh, a ledge to stand on but they need to find more solid ground than just a ledge yeah, they need to keep this going and that's not going to be good as Lavish is going to hit it in other end. Chikuki going to be there for the aerial. Can they bang it down? It looks so slow and it's just not fast enough to get anywhere. Right angle, right timing, but not enough speed to get the goal there. Lavish gets demoed up in the air with that 50. Jocko's going to take it out. Going to take it back for himself, but he has no boost, so Chikuki needs to take it. Soccer Scout can't get it, and Elysium puts it back, and we're playing a little bit of ping pong now as we go into overtime for our third game. If DePaul score here, they win the series in a sweep. If Fairfield, they're doing it again! They're going for it again. They're dribbling it up the side. They're passing it in, but there's no one there to get the shot off. The ball still is in Fairfield's part of the field. Lavish from downtown, but oh no, they've left the net wide open, but it doesn't go in. Fairfield might have just lost their biggest opportunity to stay alive. Oh my goodness, Fairfield. No, and this one goes off the crossbar as well. Fairfield. 
Oh no, they're blowing opportunity after opportunity here. Is this how it ends? It can't end like that. Right now, the Paul, though, like, they just can't get it out of their zone. They, they won the kickoff. They tried going for the same cheeky play. It didn't work out. But now they're finally getting an attack going. I, I, if I'm DePaul, I'd be really scared of Fairfield right now because they look on top of things, and that goal does not go in for DePaul. Got a, about a minute now in overtime, and still no one has been able to break that tie. Elysium almost scoring on, on his own team there. That would have... Uh... That would have been the saddest goal. That would have been the, the worst way to end off that series. That's a nice save by Matter. And, uh, oh my goodness. All of these ball touches matter a lot here. Everything that's being done, Matter is going to find it. There's no one really there to be able to pressure him. But Lavish with the rotational change really puts pressure there. And there's a, it's a 1v2. This is a great pass. And go in. go in. Another team play. The Paul just played like a team. Fairfield just, they, they stuck in thanks to lucky bounces and Paul just letting up opportunities on the defense. But when they were on the offense and they had ball control, Fairfield just weren't on an even playing field. And Paul just absolutely decimated Fairfield today. Let's give a little bit of credit though to Fairfield. They did come back at the end when it mattered most, but they couldn't get the goal that was the most important. That was going to be the one that broke that tie and sent them to a match for. But I mean, they showed up at the very end. Maybe you would have loved to see them come back a little bit sooner. You know, in the second matchup, I think if they had showed a little bit more life there, the third one, it could have gone a much different way, but they still did put up a fight till the very end, but it just wasn't enough to get the job done. As you said, it is going to be a sweep for DePaul University here today. Yeah, it's going to be a sweep as uh, we are going to go for a break here. We'll break down DePaul versus Fairfield as our second matchup is going to start up soon. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you all in a bit.
and gentlemen, welcome back to EGFC. My name is Quantum Deathcat here with Jag once again. We had a great first series, DePaul, stunning Fairfield. And now we're going to go to University of North Dakota and then William and Mary. This is going to be an interesting game. Another game where both teams are pretty tight in the, in the standings. <laughs> Absolutely. But we're looking at kind of the opposite where before it was like teams that were a bit higher in the standings here. We're looking at two teams a bit lower, but still have plenty of chances to make the postseason, depending on how the rest of this split goes. North Dakota, they're coming off a loss to Marquette. Marquette, one of the best teams I think that we have in Rocket League here at the EGFC. And Lemon Mary were able to get a 3-0 last week against Manhattan Collins. But as you pointed out, they struggled for that. It was not a, you know, stomp or a steamroll by any means to both these teams coming off of uh, opposites of the 03 spectrum 30 spectrum but both of them here coming in today looking for another win if i remember uh, against marquette they still put up a fight so that's why i'm giving the edge here to north dakota over william and mary the, uh, just seeing what happened last week but i think this is going to be a five game series actually that's what i'm uh, that's what i'm predicting here it's going to be a tight series maybe a, a bit like game three of uh of last series where it's just gonna be blow for blow uh lucky ball going in here and a really good set play up there und gonna be in the blue blue and mary gonna be in the orange both have green different shades and neither been able to score but it's only been a minute so far and right now when mary they're playing on their own doorstep trying to block out their own goal and und have had a great job so far on the attack and that's gonna be the first goal for UND, Red Rocket's got to find that one, passing it to himself after he gets bumped, the ball gets bumped back, and there you go. He's going to make that solo play work somehow. Yeah, it looks like Legacy on the side of Lumen Mary just bumped the ball, but did not bump it the right way, didn't actually get the clear, and then, as you said, for UND, they are able to go through two tackles and still are able to come out with a great shot to put them ahead early on. And I think if you're William and Mary, you got to get something going because so far it's just been all UND on the attack. Ah, that's interesting. That's why. Oh, that makes sense. I've never seen William and Mary play before. And so I did not know that they actually had a B squad or a, a different squad that they could put in. And that's that's what they did. They put in different players. Uh, William and Mary did up against Manhattan. Interesting. So they gave their main players a break. Sounds like it. Looking at the players on William and Mary right now, I do have to agree these names aren't ringing any bells from last week when I casted them up against uh, Manhattan. And that's interesting because it's always great to have a bit of a break. You don't want to get overexposed. You don't want to get burnt out. But I mean, again, we talk about momentum and you saw Fairfield coming off a bye last week. Weren't able to get that game experience and it took them a very long time to get going. So we'll see if William and Mary have the same problem after they give their A squad a bit of a rest. Legacy is going to pop it up here, going down. It's going to go into the corner. Geeks uh, leave it for Red Rocket. Uh, Red Wa uh, Rocket, uh, not exactly. Uh, his car is not exactly his color uh, color's name. Eh? And uh, Legacy is going to make that save there on Red Rocket. Cleared out. And the Geeks popping it up in the air. Going it for himself. The shot is wide. And uh, that is going to be that. It seems like a little bit more ping pong here. A lot of giveaways and takeaways. A lot of giveaways and takeaways. That was almost a giveaway into the goal, but Red Rock just not able to thread the needle, barely pushes it past. And now William and Mary, for the first time in a long time, they're going to get a bit of a counterattack going here. And that is beautiful. It's going to get cleared out once again. Both teams seeming to have uh, the same amount of opportunities, but there's a lot more uh, takeaways and giveaways, as I said, as Red Rocket, Red Rocket finds this goal. That's their fifth shot of the day, so Red Rocket not afraid. Going to be coming all the way down from mid. Finds the ball after it's cleared out a bit. Able to make sure it doesn't go past them and just able to get it in. I mean, that's what you need to do. Go for those easy shots. It doesn't have to be the most difficult shot in the world. As long as you hit your target, as long as you don't overthink it too much, you will be up ahead. And now Geeks able to carry it through. And suddenly UND has broken this game wide open. That's going to be their second goal in about 10 seconds. Geeks just able to win the ball at mid and there is that miss 50 50 jump aerial attempt from William and Mary and now they are playing on the back foot definitely on the back foot 183 seconds left on the 180 123 seconds left on the clock here it's three nothing 
And there's plenty of time, right? They can score once every 20, uh, 40 seconds or so and be able to tie this up. But they need to stop the uh, University of North Dakota here from getting into their zone and getting those opportunities because they've been able to pass it to each other and get some great opportunities solo as well when given the opportunity. Oh, no. That opportunity is just going to be put wide. It's way too high as Ladster puts it down and towards the front. Cannonball says no. Legacy tries to put it back in. Red Rocket also gets the clear out. So two opportunities there, both of them cleared away. You saw how Red Rocket was playing that. They were playing so patiently. They weren't over committing to their defense at all. Then they waited for the ball. They realized there was no one else who could get it. Then they finally go for the clear. Um, if they had been a bit more impatient, they might have left their goal wide open and that would have been a great scoring opportunity, but just plays the ball perfectly in there. I mean, again, there, it is a little bit more attack from than Mary. They're finally starting to get the ball out of their end of the field, but as one minute remains, you talked about every 40 seconds, now it's going to be every 20 seconds to tie this up. Yeah, definitely a lot harder to do now as it was before. 50 seconds left on the clock, three goals in 50 seconds. While it is a tall order, it's even higher when... Uh, when you have no momentum, right? You're down in the dumps right now because you, you let in three and you have none. That's going to be the first. No, it's not. It's off the post. I thought that was in. That angle looked so sure. Just no follow through. Weren't able to get the redirect after it bounced off the post. And that might have been Lemon Mary's best and only chance, depending on how the rest of this goes. Going to be playing in the corner. Cannonball not able to hit it. Going to be going off the crossbar instead. And now Lemon Mary might get one final shot, one last crack at this. But it's going to be Legacy who's going to have to make it happen. Yeah, 10 seconds on the clock here. They need a goal right now. I think it's, uh, it's done because even if they have kickoff goals, it's uh, all but over here for William and Mary for this first game. Uh, University of North Dakota are going to take this first game as it hits the floor, or does it not? It's going to go in the back of the net. No, it's stopped. Oh, Geeks saves his own team shot, and it's going to finish 3 nothing for North Dakota there. Not as dominant as the last series that we saw, but still a shutout nonetheless. North Dakota, they are starting this off on a high note. I think Lehman Mary, it just, they, they stuck playing defense. I don't know how many shots they got on net by the end of it, but it did not seem like that many, and most of them came when they were already down by three goals. So you get one or two back, then it becomes a ball game, but they weren't able to get anything. They weren't able to get enough there, honestly. They weren't able to get enough shots. They weren't able to get enough offense a lot of the time. They were stuck playing on their own half of the field. So we'll see if this A team can now wake up after having that warm up. Is it is still a first to three, so there's a lot more Rocket League to be coming our way before this one's over. And this one felt a lot tighter, if you ask me, especially in the times where it was held scoreless for a long while. It felt like William and Mary did have the opportunities. It's just that they couldn't um, execute on the plays that were given to them, right? They just didn't have the uh, final nail in the coffin. They weren't able to to get their coup de grace, and that, because of that, they they were held scoreless on the score sheet. And I think what you saw there was like, if you talk about the nail in the coffin, I think what was really the nail in the coffin for them was that Geek's goal, um, because that was just a big misplay, unfortunately, William and Mary to let Geek just take it all the way in off of an aerial, just kind of walk it to the goal. So we'll see if they can get something going already, a very aggressive demo coming out from Legacy early on. Very aggressive demo indeed, because you don't see a, a demo this early on normally, because no one's really in position in terms of rotations just yet. And so a demo that early on can actually help with rotations as Cannonball, he's not as inaccurate as his namesake. He finds the back of the net there. Does indeed, and just follows the ball. I mean, that could have been a bit of a misplay as Geeks is also there. So got to make sure that you're communicating who's going after what. But luckily for them, Geeks doesn't actually touch it at all. And then Cannonball able to put it all the way in, shooting that one out. I'm trying to think of a Cannonball reference, but I mean, we're, we just don't have enough time for that as William and Mary finally are going to get something on the attack. Then immediately the ball is taken to their side of the field. Yeah, exactly. They had opportunity after opportunity. And every time so far, it's just they, they haven't been able to keep ball possession. They lose possession of it. It feels a little bit like Fairfield, right? where they lost possession of the ball without really taking it for a long time. So if they can keep it in the offensive zone or find goals like this off of uh, counterattacks, they will be very, very handy indeed. It's tied up one, 408 on the clock. 
Geeks just missing it there by an inch, but that's what happens. You miscalculate your jump, you aren't able to actually get the defense you need, and Lemary finally able to get their first goal of the series, and I mean, Lemary, well, they're looking a lot better than we saw from Fairfield at this point, if we're just comparing the two series, but again, it's two different matchups and two different sides of the standing, so both these teams right now just trying to stay alive in playoff contention, and UND, they made their case early on, but now Ladster wants to make their own. Cannonball is gonna try and get it on the offense. It's gonna be a very unfortunate bounce. Almost went in, but uh, Chimney says no as Red Rocket passes it there. That's a triple commit on defense. And what a save there by Chimney twice on the goal line, able to get those saves. The triple commit does pay off, but they can't get the ball cleared out as Geeks is gonna find this. The shot is wide. And you talk about the triple command, and that's where things get really dangerous for William and Mary. If there isn't a good follow-up shot, if there's a good bounce for UND, they score on that almost every time and they keep the lead back there. Uh, you saw the rotation. They came back to mid from the person who originally shot it, so the, there was no follow-up, luckily for William and Mary, but that could have been the second goal. That definitely could. That would have been disastrous for, for William and Mary, but it's still going to be 2 nothing for UND here. They're going to find a second cannonball uh, coming in right out of a cannon. Yeah, just, just completely shot out. Has all the speed. Has it just like locked in. It's like they've got sonar or something. They've got exactly the right location and they're able to just knock it all the way. And again, it doesn't have to be the best play in the world. It doesn't have to be the most mechanical. If you can take those easy goals, you'll take them every day of the week and twice on Sundays. And so far, UND have been able to score twice. So that is exactly where the score stands right now. It's 2-1 to one with uh, UND on top. And they're also on top for the series so far. This Geeks is going to try and get the double tap there. Not going to work out. Cannonball. Well, I talked about inaccuracies. Cannonball uh, coming in a little bit too hot not finding the the open net instead finding the iron that's uh, just above it and he gets another shot off this one is bar down and out as geeks gets that pass from red rocket the opportunities are f not far and few in between in fact they're fast and furious but oh my goodness they they could have scored so many more goals off of those opportunities but uh, the inaccuracies for for und it might come to ba bite them in the end but for right now they still have the lead and they're continuing to grow with it. And that's what I was saying about like like the easier goals. Like just don't overthink it. Just go for it. Don't go too fast. There, as you said, a bit too strong coming in. It doesn't cost them in the end as they do get the goal because they keep the ball on the other side of the field and William and Mary, they just can never clear it. But like you said, those mistakes could bite them later on for now. They're still gonna have that lead. Three goals throughout each of the two games, six in total for UND. They did allow William and Mary to score one. They're gonna allow them to score two. And that's where things start to get a bit more dicey if you're UND because you've had chances to be way farther ahead and now you're only one goal away from the other side for being tied once more. That looked like a volleyball set play. Chimney pops it up in the air and then another pop-up by Legacy off the back wall both times and then Latzer is just going to find that one beautifully and pops it down. That's gonna be a nice shot as that one. That's a good 50 by Red Rocket. Chimney with the save, and then it goes wide. Geeks keeps it up in the air. Cannonball can't find it, so Red Rocket will. He's got half of his boost remaining. Cannonball passes it over to him. The shot is in the midfield, but Geeks gets bumped. That is it. such a timely bump, but that's gonna allow for the ball to be cleared here. Yeah, it's a great tackle. It completely throws Geeks off of where they were trying to go, and that's going to be another shot to not find it. But the aerial is going to come in. It's going to be on target. It's going to barely miss, bouncing off the crossbar. And if Geeks had been positioned to go for that once more, that could have been the fourth goal for UND. They still have possession of it for now, but, I mean, if you've got a minute left, why even bother shooting? Just keep possession, keep your lead. Because if you give the ball up your play too aggressively, the, the equalizer might come out from William and Mary. Well, here's the thing is that you know if you're UND here that you'll make a few mistakes, right? That you're going to give the ball up like right there. You might try to kill time, but you are going to make a few mistakes here and there. So you want that ball as far away from your net as possible, and that will force uh, the opponent in a defensive position where you're more likely to give up the ball. So it's it's tit for tat here as it's with 29 seconds left. UND are going to find another goal of Geeks to Red Rocket back over to Geeks. That is some great passing play. 
And again, oh, that could have again been like a bit of a misplay. We saw that almost happen on their first goal where they bump each other and then would take each other out of that good shooting range. But again, just don't connect luckily for UND. And like you said, I mean, if you, if you, you don't want to play in your own end. I think the thing is like they could just keep it on the other side of the field. Don't necessarily have to go for those crazy shots, but just keep passing it, maybe find a goal here or there to make sure they stay ahead. But that last goal that came out is probably going to be all that they need to put this matchup away. We might go for another one. It's just going to go to the right. But with that, it looks like we're going to be at a 2-0 series lead for UND. And uh, it's definitely not because of uh, William and Mary here. William and Mary played very good this game, but they've just been outplayed so far. And the opportunities that they've had have slowed down since game one. Game one, they just could not get anything to go in when they had the opportunities. This game around, they just didn't have opportunities. They were able to get two, though. So I think the biggest thing is they were able to actually score this time, which I think is really important going into game three, because usually as the series goes on, it gets closer and closer and closer here. Now they've already tightened up a little bit, able to keep it much closer than the first one four two. It's only a two goal differential. That's really not a big deal at the end of the day. Obviously, it's still a loss, but you say like, hey, you know, we're able to get our defense a little bit better. We're able to get some better counterattacks. If we find the net a few more times, we're able to take this into a map four, map five, and maybe all the way for the reverse sweep, because that's the only way they're going to win this one now. Yeah, exactly. And if I'm William and Mary, the reverse sweep, it's very possible, right? You and D have shown some weaknesses, and it's if you, William and Mary have seen those weaknesses and know what to do to um, penetrate into those weaknesses, right? To really make them pay. Yeah, I think I think a biggest thing is we've seen that UND, when they get pressured out, when the team is too aggressive, when William and Mary was having their best attacks, uh, UND, they kind of, I would say they kind of split apart. They weren't able to really get a good defense going, and it was enough to keep the ball out a lot of the time because William and Mary just weren't shooting on net. But if they were a bit more accurate, perhaps more of those goals would have been able to reach it, which is, you know, kind of the obvious statement. But, you know, even when it goes wide, you can have the follow up. They just didn't have any follow up plays. Now they're going to have to have one of the people rotating from the mirror. They're going to have to go through those shots and try to find them on the other side if it goes wide. And uh, that's going to be for William and Mary to see if they're able to do here or if you and D are able to keep them at bay. That is a Great opportunity, but Legacy can't put his name in the history books right now as he can't find it. And Geeks, what a solo play! It's the exact same thing that we saw in the last match. Geeks just gets it really luckily near mid. No one is able to contest the aerial, and there is going to be a tackle, but it's not going to get the ball off course at all. And there it is. Uh, one thing I was going to say is that they have to be really careful on the side of UNG that they don't bump into each other while they're shooting because it didn't cost them there on their goals, but there were a few times where it became very close. There, you know, if you take it all the way in by yourself, you don't have to worry about your teammate making a mistake. I do have to agree uh, with the one thing though, that William and Mary do have a chance. And I think the, the William and Mary fans in the chat, I, I see all of you. Uh, you guys are seeing the potential of William and Mary. They could definitely take uh, a victory here, at least one as a consolation prize, right? But they, they have opportunities like they had before with the legacy and now that's just a bad bounce it goes off the back wall as you're gonna see here lad oh my god ladster that is just so sad that's not where you want that to go two unfortunate bounces it's oh, just crap. it's a great play though from the beginning i think und you know the bad the bad bounces definitely played into it but und they were running it up the wall they were dribbling it really well and that's they were keeping it on William & Mary's side of the field. They're gonna get another goal there, and all of a sudden, it kind of seems like whatever win was in William & Mary's sails, unfortunately, has been drowned out by a hurricane known as the University of North Dakota. That's gonna be two goals and two shots for Cannonball. Yeah, two goals, two shots. That is very well done, very well played. And, well, it's, it's three nothing. That's all I can say. If that's really all that can be said. I mean, they, William and Mary, they had a really great match too. We kept talking about that. There were opportunities, there were chances where they could have won it. They could have tied things up and brought it to overtime. But now the play, I mean, they started off really smart. They had a very aggressive attack at the very beginning off the opening kickoff. And they, they found momentum, they found pressure. And then it was just Geeks taking it all the way in. And from there, things have started to kind of, you know, unwind at the scene. Teams, unfortunately, where they have not been able to get something going. Now they are, but 
It's gonna be a misplay. There, there actually were two people on the side oh, of UND no. to tackle into each other. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's what I mean for William and Mary, right? They've had opportunities like that where UND have cut rotation to make saves like uh, like this. And the opportunity was the rebound shot, right? Because obviously the first shot was going to be stopped because of the double commit and the the mispositioning, right? The cut rotation. But afterwards, the shot just goes off the post. Those need to go in. Those are the opportunities that you don't get very often. And sadly, William and Mary have just been missing those sets. And that was exactly what I was talking about before we got into this third matchup. It was exactly what I was saying, you know, the shots, they can be there. And even if they're not, if you got someone playing an alternate angle, playing on the other side, then you give yourself a good chance. There is going to be one back. Going to open up the scoring once again for Mary. So they've not been shut out the last two games, but they still have two more goals to overcome to tie it up and make it virtually 0-0. And they've got time. I mean, two and a half minutes, they still have half the time left in the matchup. So it's definitely not impossible. How does, uh, out of all the shots, right, that William and Mary have shot this this series, that's one that goes in. That that surprises me because that is such a tough angle to shoot from. You you only have like two, three degrees of of, of placement there, right? And, uh, out of all 360 degrees, right, that, that was a perfectly placed shot, especially where it was positioned. The fact that it finds its way in is actually more impressive than any of the other goals that they've scored so far, which is very telling, right? They find one big goal there, and it's such an impressive goal, but they need to find the gimmies as well, right? They can't just score impressive goals, because those goals are hard to find. They need to score gimmies like this one, but it goes off the post, and then the crossbar, and it's cleared out. Those need to go in. And UND has been taking gimmies all day of the week, and they're gonna hit another one there. Again, it's Geeks, who's just had the best counterattack I've seen so far in EGFC, and I'm sure there's gonna be a player next week who's gonna take the words out of my mouth there with another goal. But just, that's like three goals for basically the exact same play. Win it in your own part of the field or at mid, go for an aerial shot, and every time it's just been on target. That's gonna be, I wouldn't say that's a gimme, but like other times there's been great gimmies where it's just been, you know, a good pass or a bad deflect from the enemy team, and UND have been capitalizing all night on those. UND have been able to capitalize on mistakes made by William and Mary. They don't do so on every play, right? They do miss their opportunities here and there. William and Mary are just giving them more opportunities. The problem is that they'd have a lot more momentum if they could find goals like that, where when UND make mistakes, they need to be able to capitalize. They have not been able to do so practically all series long. They need to find two more goals in 70 seconds. It's definitely possible. I think they need to win this opening kickoff, which doesn't look like they do. So that's going to slow down your momentum for a few more seconds. But there is an overcommitment there by UND. They put two in goal. Neither of them make the save. And that's going to give Women Mary a little bit more life to live on now. 60 seconds left, they got to score about e once every 30 seconds, but as time keeps winding down, things get more and more unlikely for them. And that's an open net shot. Can Legacy make the save? It's actually touched by Legacy. What a touch there, and I'll pass it down. I'm wondering, was it Geeks wow. that touched it? I think it might've actually, it was Geeks that stopped it. Yeah. And it was, like, I think that that worked out actually better in their favor because they basically, yeah. they stopped the shot, but it just left it there for Cannonball to follow up with. Legacy, if he would have stopped that, that would have been a, a clear ball, or at least it would have been into the corner, right? Geeks has the presence in mind to not go for the demo, but to go for the ball instead and kill it. He killed the ball speed. He killed everything about it, and it just messed up the entire play there for Legacy. Nothing he could do on that play, and his teammates were just out of position, and I think... That will be the nail in the coffin here for William and Mary. They don't find a win, sadly, but they will find a little bit of pride in knowing that this series could have gone either way, but UND just capitalizing better. Yeah, and I think that that team play at the very end, well, even though we've seen misplays from UND here and there, I think that kind of shows you where North Dakota is at versus William and Mary, where they were able to find a great play by Geeks at the very end to stop the ball from going too quickly because I think that Legacy would have been able to get that deflection and be able to clear it out. So there, they're able to just, you know, again, is it is it planned or is it just timing? 
it doesn't matter because they execute it to perfection in there. They get one more goal. And as you said, the nail in the coffin, it solidifies their win. A 3-0 sweep for North Dakota. Yeah, a 3-0 sweep. And I, I did say that I saw North Dakota winning this over William & Mary just because of what I saw last week. Yes, it was different players, apparently, for, for William & Mary. But the, the players, I don't think they, they, they battered today in terms of for William & Mary here. Because North Dakota came out so strong. They were consistent. Yes, they missed their opportunities here and there. But William & Mary, they, they held off. Uh, giving them uh, opportunities. Well, we're going to be taking a very quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be having a Red Rocket talk to us about their victory for North Dakota. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few moments. and welcome back everyone thanks you for watching that amazing series that we just had we've got red rocket here from the university of north dakota how are you doing today i'm doing good feeling good after that series and I don't blame you. A good 3-0. Um, I, I guess my first question for you was, how was it to get a 3-0 after getting 0-3 uh, last week by Marquette? Definitely felt good. Uh, last week was rough. We had some DC issues, and that kind of we could never really gain any momentum. One of our players kept leaving, and so it felt good to get out there and uh, beat the team pretty convincingly. And so far in the or in the spring split, we're doing a lot better than we did in the fall, which is nice to see. And uh, yeah, exactly. The spring split. You guys have really uh, got, got a, a spring in your step, it seems, right? They, you've uh, absolutely, not 180, but I think you guys have been playing a lot better. You guys feel a little bit better as a team. And despite those DC issues, right, um, you guys didn't have any today. So this, this was just a perfect culmination here. Uh, you guys were clicking on all cylinders. You got every opportunity right. Uh, how does that feel to just be that consistent? and barely missing any opportunity when it presented itself to you. Oh, yeah, it feels great when you're, you know, your team's clicking, you're winning every 50 or most of them at least. You're getting some nice passes in there. Uh, Geeks, who we played with today, is uh, new to this or newer to this to EGF, so it's awesome to get him in there. He's cracked at passing and setting up some nuts plays. But, um, yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, nothing better than a good passing play in Rocket League. <laughs> All right, so I got to ask, you know, there's obviously been a bit of a resurgence for your guys' program, but next week you're going up against Marist College. So what do you think your odds are against them? Um, I actually haven't peeked at the standings recently, but I assume uh, they're a tougher one if you're asking the question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we'll do what we try to always do, which is just throughout the week, prepare, uh, have some good practices, watch uh, we tend to go back and watch VODs of the team we're playing to see if we can notice any tendencies or anything. But we'll just have to go in swinging and uh, hope that it works out for us. I, I would uh, suggest to look at VODs from the last three weeks because Marist have not been the team that they have been uh, recently. They've uh, they've lost a lot of games recently and uh, they only had one the fall uh, in the fall split. So the fact that uh, they've gotten two already in this um, spring split I think you guys actually have a strong chance against them, and uh, mm -hmm. I wish you the best of luck there. Anything else you want to tell us uh, before we let you go here? Uh, 
No, not really. It's just uh, we're going to keep grinding and keep doing our best and hopefully win out for the rest of the split. Well, right, congratulations well, yeah. on the win here, and uh, we're going to bring it to a break, and we will see you all for the next series in a little bit. I think we're going to be changing casters. I'm not too sure, though, but uh, we will see you all in a little bit, ladies and gentlemen.
This is the first time I'm walking away from you. But this is the third time you broke something in from you. The first time I'm walking away from you, but this is the third time you broke something in from you. Don't cry. I keep telling myself this.
Welcome back, everybody, to some EGF Collegiate Rocket League action. My name is Andrew Taco, and next to me in the casting booth is Vincent. I always get nervous gesturing left or right because I'm, I oh. think I'm fairly certain you're on one side of me, but I don't want to commit to it. But Vincent, we're going to be uh, walking through each other through Niagara University in Wichita State. Vincent, how are you doing tonight? Man, I'm doing good. And you know, the best thing about that is, of course, it's mirrored. So so you're always wrong anyway on the top, on top oh, yeah. of that. But yeah, no, it, it should be a good time. Yeah, first matchup, Niagara University, which Josh Day. Of course, we just got done seeing two very interesting matchups already this evening and, and more Rocket League left to play. Niagara University coming in two and eight right now in the season, not having the greatest of seasons, all things considered, but certainly has been able to pick up some big victories, which would I'll say on the other hand, though, four and six. So kind of running around that even level just under it. So they're looking to kind of step things up once more and uh, and get over that 50-50 you know, hump, if you will, uh, as they move forward. So I think the potential for a pretty solid matchup here, uh, considering the standings, though those standings not always telling the full story, to be fair. Yeah, one thing that's nice about Rock League is it's uh, on the day, you know, you can just get into a game and have plenty of surprises ahead. Hopefully that is exactly what we are going to be seeing out of these two squads today as they are both kind of mid table teams. So without further ado, we're just going to be able to throw these guys right onto the field and see what's going to go down in the future here. We are going to have Qui-Gon Jim facing off on the kickoff against Pablo and start things off with a nice kickoff win from Niagara off the bat, but uh, going down some midfield play. So what do you feel like these teams have to come in with the mental side because as we mentioned these teams aren't really leading the standings they're very much trying to salvage a season at this point I, honestly i think you just go in you know guns blazing so to speak right you, you go in you, you do what you can and you you put your you know wear your heart on this on your sleeve make sure to to move forward and, and do do your very best and of course that means that like you said anybody can pick it up it's whoever's doing the best on the day here for rocket league Certainly so, and we're going to start off with a little bit of fast place play from Wichita, but really just going to hang in the corner. Aus is going to try and work that out. Pass the schnitzel, does not pass the ball effectively. It will be cut out in the middle, so uh, very much so. Uh, something fairly common in Rocket League in the first game of a series is both teams playing a little passive. That is until a mistake comes in. Qui-Gon Jim on the open net. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Look at the commitment there. Nobody there. Nobody's home at all for Niagara. And, of course, Wichita, Wichita State just taking prime advantage of the situation. Whatever that happens, it's who can take advantage of mistakes like that. And right there, Wichita State doing exactly what they needed to do. Now they're maybe looking for some more of a Qui-Gon. Not the contact they're hoping for. And Zenova going to have to pick this one up. Look into the midfield. Will be cut out for now. Go for it up for Pablo to the taking, but really no good quality follow there coming from Niagara. So Aus is gonna have to salvage this one. No touch coming in, go for no follow. And that was a close miss from Wichita. Niagara wipes the sweat off their brow and they're gonna have to get back to offense, but they're lucky they didn't just concede a second. Yeah, I mean, that clear is so solid, right? Now the counterattack available, but the problem is that everybody has come back to, with the rotations there for Wichita State, just perfection. Nobody really overcommitting. They knew they made a mistake, and so they wanted to cover that off. So now Schnitzel going to have to work things up again. Another deflection coming in. Qui-Gon up well, and every single person up for Niagara. Can a touch go down? No on the first chance. On the follow-up, Zenovo gets the pass, and gentle, slow as you like, it will find its way in. I mean, like you said, a heavy commitment, right? You have everybody in the zone on the offense, but the problem is for the defense, if it works out, you know, in one play, you know, then you can't really take advantage of it, can you? So great job there from Wichita, maybe getting a little bit ahead of themselves, but again, if it works out, great. Certainly so, and now a third maybe coming around the corner instead will be deflected to the sidelines. Zenova putting on pressure. Qui-Gon Jim coming for another one off the bar. Gopher on the follow. Good goal line save by Aust. But Niagara really holding on for dear life here as we're approaching halftime. And which shot just will not slow down. Another shot will be set to the ceiling and the backboard is taking a beating here from Niagara. It's really having a, quite a lot of struggle here trying to get it off their line. 
I mean, Austin is just the keeper right now. Save after save, four of them so far right now for Niagara, doing absolutely wonderful work. And this could have been a, well, a lot of goal scores if it wasn't for Austin, who's been playing well defensively, is now looks to counterattack, but that ball not won by Niagara. Pablo's going to have to try to get a light touch here. Zenova into the middle. Qui-Gon is always seemingly around the play. On this one, they're just going to hold it up with a 50, so the attack will continue. And at this point, I feel like the best defense for Wichita is a good offense, because even now, when Niagara tries to break out, they're just so boost-starved from playing defense that they really just can't take advantage. Another ball cleared back down into their half. Yeah, they, they start to get aggressive, right? They start to try and eke their way in, but it's not quite enough and nearly another goal right there, but a very nice save there from Pat Schnitzel going to make things a little bit more difficult. Now to the corner, Oss is trying to keep it interesting. The high lob, but cut out by Qui-Gon. Now Zenova slowing it down with a light pass. Pablo, a little bit fooled, but will we get some nice contact? Oss. Not a quality clear, but they're just completely left alone. Schnitzel's just going to roll that one into the corner. But Wichita is really just not struggling whatsoever on the counterattack. They're just going to put one in again, and Niagara's struggles are seemingly compounded every single time. Yeah, unfortunately, right now, it seems like whenever the clears come through for Niagara, there's not a coherent plan in place where they're going to be going with that ball, how to, to move forward and counterattack with it. And that's just running straight into the entirety of Wichita State. Is, well, that's an easy win off the kickoff. And Mr. Go for picking up the, picking up the easy goal score. That's unfortunate. We've gone some too low morale to just overall tilt at this point. I think you're going to have to kiss goodbye to game at number one if you are Niagara. Those are always a tilt. You just don't get quite the contact of your thumb to the left stick, and that's what happens when you're a little bit imprecise at this level. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate, right? And I think this is, you know, it's still game one, though. Lots lots left to play, so it's, it's never over until it's over. And, you know, on the positive notes, the defense has been very, very solid here. Austin, particularly, I mentioned um, having a great defensive game. You know, these four scores, think about the, the amount of shots on goal I feel like we've seen. I mean, it, it's incredible considering that only four of those has gone in. So I think the defensive play here has been very solid. Yeah, but certainly so it doesn't help with their confidence going into game number two is we're weaning down the final seconds here in game one. Niagara maybe searching for one for the road, but the player in the middle for that pass was actually eliminated. Quiet Jim actually with some bloodlust is chasing Niagara players around the field. Uh, they won't get punished for it quite yet, but Pablo's trying their darndest. Another ball in the corner is getting it turned away. And as we wane down Wichita State, we'll see the sun set on a successful game one. Yeah, and there the ball hits the pitch, and well, Wichita State. Uh, I mean, it, it it was a dominant victory, all things considered. 4-0. That's a goose egg, unfortunately, for Niagara. But like I said, look at the shots. I think the shots tell the biggest story. 13 of them for Wichita State. A big fat zero right there for Niagara. It was the offense that they were struggling with, able to put together quite a few saves, a lot of good defensive plays. But whenever they cleared the ball out, they just it wasn't able to be followed up upon and so from there you know whenever whenever you have a great defensive play right you always have to have something offensive mind someone offensive minded looking to try and turn that into something else and the rotations from wichita state just not really allowing for that to happen it's just high pace i mean you see in the stat column with niagara having zero shots throughout that game they had points where it looked like they might be able to advance something but ultimately wichita state as you mentioned, just a little bit too fast. The rotation's a little bit too clean. And so I don't like to put too much stock into game ones for most teams because it is kind of a warm up game. You're trying to get used to your opponent's style. And uh, certainly Niagara has been smacked in the face a little bit with Wichita style. So going into game number two, I'm interested to see what adjustments, both mental and also on the mechanical side that this squad can actually make because uh, it was getting somewhat ugly down the stretch there. So. Uh, certainly a lot of changes are going to have to be implemented. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that this is a good example of a game, right, where you, you definitely are losing a little bit early, and then later on we saw, I don't know if you can necessarily call it that tilt factor, but it certainly seemed as if there was some um, mistakes from just being a little bit emotional, right? Um, but 
That being said, it's game number two. You get back into it, you reset your mental, and, and you move forward. That's what the best players can do, and I have no doubt that Niagara is going to be able to do just that. And going into the daytime champion's field, seeing if maybe the a little bit brighter light will be able to shine the path forward here for Niagara as Pablo is actually going to work in conjunction with his squad mate to put that one on the sidewall, but unfortunately, no pass coming in, just a little bit too fast off the ceiling. Zenova. That's a miss. I'm just going to call it a double fake because Pirro sets something up instead, gets bumped out of the way and going to have to go back to the drawing board. But first 30 seconds, kind of more routine play from Wichita as they're trying to get to keep going back to that backboard. Yeah, I mean, it's all kind of rotating around this middle area, and that's exactly what you want to see if Niagara has made some adjustments. And now they have an opportunity. They've moved forward into their opponent's zone, and this is now where I want to see some adjustments from Niagara. So now Schnitzel trying to advance it down, but just gets outflipped a little bit too much speed there. Into the corner, Aust is going to have to tap that one just to buy a little bit of time off the ceiling. Schnitzel into the midfield. No one around for Niagara to chase, but that's a miss by Wichita on the back line. It's going to bounce out dangerously. Pablo, they can't touch it, and Qui-Gon clears it down. So things looking a little raggedy around the back end for Wichita. However, Niagara still maybe just learning to maybe crawl before they can run as they're slowly trying to work their way down and another attack stopped and this one actually might get punished. Bibro will put it in on the open net. I mean, that's just so unfortunate, right? You get caught out. This was a great break ball. Good job getting it to that position, but you have three players committed and that's of course not going to give you much of anything. That was just enough to get the stop and then an open net available. So. Wichita State, again, taking advantage whenever there's a mistake for Niagara. Now Pablo will send that one into the corner off the ceiling. Not the best clear pass. The Jitzel is going off the ceiling for that. Very ambitious, especially for the team that is currently behind and has struggled offensively. But, you know, maybe when you've exhausted all the ordinary possibilities, then you just need to get exotic and see what happens from there. But so far, hasn't really been helping his Aust. Hero from game one at times defensively for Niagara will come through with another save. This one deflected across. Qui-Gon off the post and out. Schnitzel gets a brief tap, but ultimately results the same. Zenova gets a second. Yeah, and honestly, I'm not even too sure what happened. It kind of just seemed like everybody was in, in the middle of trying to rotate around back into the net. They thought they had had maybe a little bit of a break towards the middle of the field, but it just didn't really work out that way. And so with that, yet another time where Wichita State they just take advantage. There was three players ready and waiting there to just take shots at that open net. Certainly snow. And, and now uh, Niagara is really in an interesting position now because they're down by two, but they have looked stronger on offense. It's just they really haven't had that last touch. They've had several opportunities where Wichita has not dealt with the ball very well. And I think if they can just move a player up a little bit quicker and get those opportunities uh, a little bit more decisively, I think they can definitely get back into these series. But with Wichita State playing as confidently as they are, as um, another ball off the backboards and over going for a crazy angle. I mean, the confidence of Wichita State right now is just off the charts. It's so hard to counter a team that's playing so carefree. Exactly. You know, when you're playing loose, you're playing well. That's what I always say. And indeed, I think you're right. The decisiveness, a bit of a problem right now for Niagara. There's a couple of times where I've seen if they had just gone for the for the ball, they probably could have made it. But they've, they've been conditioned after getting punished so many times not to go for them. And that's when they've, they've looked as if, oh, well, they, they just, oh, what's happened? Oh, they've just waited out and not quite gone in there. And that's a nice demo, a double in fact, and just walks the ball right in there. That's beautiful. Deaths abound on the Niagara side. And so too is somewhat their grasp on this game. We've said they've looked more promising, but at the end of the day, it's hard to stop the runaway train that is Wichita. The offense just marching down the field. And it really just seems like Niagara's trying to <laughs> take a chisel and just knock down a wall, whereas Wichita is just going full speed ahead as they've not slowed down even one bit trying to bust out the passing play there and Pibro is going to be able to get a third for themselves just a nice standout performance from them in game two I mean it didn't even work right but just the, I love watching them going for that one two the wall pass easy does it one off of another 
split the defender and hit it into the net, but it didn't work. It was the clear. Unfortunately, the uh, uh, the retouch available off the back of the wall. And yeah, 4-0, looking strong, Wichita State. I mean, it's not, not unwinnable at this point with 90 seconds left, but it's certainly going to have to be a comeback of massive proportions. Now the ball into the middle again. Qui-Gon Jim at this point just adding to the stat pad. Everyone represented the goal from Wichita and a good pass by Pibro. Yeah, I, I think that here what we're seeing right now is just, you're right, a little bit better Niagara offensively, but it has unfortunately meant that their defense has paid dramatically with that as they try to go some with some more aggressive offensive plays. Now their creativity here. I'm, I'm honestly just looking for some momentum from Niagara. I would like them to get a goal so they have a little bit more confidence going into game number three, which uh, at this point certainly has to be their lifeline game here as uh, we're looking certainly towards a 2-0 coming forward. But if they can get a goal, maybe at least then they have some confidence that, yes, this defense is not impenetrable. We do have the capability to be able to put that in. But at this point, they might be a little bit too... I'm not sure if shaken is really the word, but it, it does feel like that. I'm sure when you're uh, facing constant pressure yet again, uh, a game where Wichita is almost hitting double digits in shots. Actually, they have hit double digits in shots where uh, you've been only able to put in uh, one shot so far. Yeah, I mean, even even compared to last game, right? There was 13 shots for Wichita and none, in fact, for the opposing side. So it's just it, it's been adjustments, but not quite quick enough. And you're right. You need to see something, a momentum turner here. Even a nice save could give it to you. Just something to get the comms rolling. Everybody's saying nice in the voice comm uh, and, and picking up the pace and, and making everybody, you know, a little bit of a smile, right? <laughs> that is the universal language of esports. <laughs> Something successful happens and everyone says nice simultaneously. <laughs> you know you're doing you're doing fine when that rings out, but unfortunately Nag is going to have to wait a little bit longer to hear that in their own comms. Wichita State takes game two and moves on to match point. Yeah, and, and it would have to be the reverse sweep, of course, for Niagara to pick this up. It, it has, it, it's really looked super one-sided. I think that it's it's honestly, though, just one or two small adjustments from Niagara away from being a close game. The the thing is that when they, when they tried to get aggressive right there, it seemed almost like Niagara, they they didn't quite have that, that killer inst instinct. They, they weren't quite sure where to get aggressive, where to go for those 50-50 balls. And so they just didn't end up going for them. You know, in, in a game as fast-paced as Rocket League, when you hesitate, you've already lost. That, that's just how quick it is. Um, and so for Niagara, needing to make those decisions slightly, slightly faster. Yeah, I, I would like to see a little bit more aggressiveness on the ball, not necessarily because they're lacking in going for the ball, but they're. I feel like when they do get close, you, you've mentioned this before, when they do get close, they don't actually fully commit to a ball. And if they do, they don't choose their moments right. So I'd like to see Niagara play maybe a little bit safer on some opportunities where it's a risky play, but when they have a chance at it, I really need them to go all the way through because right now they don't have any more lives left. They are on match point. And right now, Wichita looks like they're running away with it. But as you mentioned, some things go a little bit differently in the beginning of a game. We might be seeing Niagara go on the board. They've only had one shot, but they've had many opportunities that have been able to you know, just kind of slip out into the middle, but there's just no one there to follow up a shot. So a little bit closer rotations, a little bit cleaner movement and comms and might be seeing something else, but going into game number three, which uh, that is the last thing that they're looking to allow. And they're trying to start off with some fire here at the Pibro. The nice little touch pass there, almost bamboozling the defense, but uh, instead, Niagara will be able to get their first clear. Yeah, and this is a, a solid start, right? They're, they're now sitting in the midfield, playing around the midfield, and then getting the, the push into the opponent's zone. But now with the with the counterattack, it, it just makes things look as if, oh, there wasn't quite that much of a plan there with that clear, and the counterattack perfect, getting the goal off the rip just in the first 30 seconds. Fantastic shot there from Swan Dog, just wrapping around it, putting on target. And sometimes it's all you need with a decent amount of power. Just put it anywhere on target and hope the defense struggles with it. And struggle they did. 20 second, seconds in, and we already have a Wichita State goal. So, Agra, I know uh, at this point, every game you have to treat it like a mental reset, but it can't help when right off the bat you're again giving one up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely doesn't make things easier, right? Um, but nonetheless, it's just one goal. Definitely able to come back from that. And Oh, well, that's unfortunate. That demo going to make things a lot harder, though. That ball into the corner. Schnitzel is going to pass that one off to us as 
Swan Dog waiting off the middle. A great pass into Zenova, and that's going to go post it in. What a find from the uh, Witch Doll offense. Yeah, and, and, and this is kind of what happens when, when you're just basically clearing into your own corner and then getting cleared back out in the middle of the field. You're just going to have somebody eventually follow up on that from Wichita State, and that's what happened. Uh, even kick off a Swan Dog actually already ready for it. They're just going to send that deep into the Niagara corner. That by Aust, so he'll pay with his life for that save going into the middle. It'll be ricocheting down. Pablo, actually, it's a very interesting touch there, but again, just no one quite close enough to it. Boss is going to send that one deep off the corner. Pibro misses, and that's going to get punished finally on the board. Aust, who else for Niagara will get there first? Yeah, who else is right? What a great ball in the corner. And then the good, the touch there to just make it impossible for Pipro to get back in time. And so it's finally on the board for Niagara off the back of Aust, making some heroic plays. And it's such an unfortunate 50 because right like that, as soon as they get a response to those two goals, they get one up off the kickoff. Unfortunate, the slow kickoff almost causing that weird deflection and they're right back down to a two goal margin. I mean, that's the same mistake we saw back in game one as well. You can't leave that lane open and well, when they do, it gets punished. Pebro's going to send that one deep down, goes to the block, doesn't quite get an aspect of it, but so we'll be able to follow up at least. Pablo into the middle. They'll take it slow, play for the 50. Schnitzel will gladly just send that one on. Now over the top, Swan Dog chasing that down. It's a little kiss of a pass to Zenova, and that's a oh. beauty of a finish. The double tap for four. Yeah, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. Easy does it. And look at that setup right there as well from the teammate. And then, of course, that double tap to close it down. It's just, I mean, that is just style points. Easy does it there for Wichita State as they pick up their fourth. I mean, this is starting to, to look more like the other games, even despite the significant amount of offense we've seen from uh, Niagara. And Wichita is really just a team. I feel like that really feels, uh, I, I think the term that it used to use a lot is streaky, is that once they start getting going, it's very hard to slow them down. And once they get that first goal, it's uh, you kind of feel that uh, lump in the back of Niagara's throat getting a little bit worried and kind of seeing why now another four goal game for them and it might even get added on as Pablo doesn't get this one but Zenova fortunately for Niagara doesn't get a touch either giveaway in the middle Pablo that's an open net in a rare mistake from the Wichita defense and it's a two goal game again I would actually want to say, I don't think this is a rare mistake from Wichita. This has happened quite often. You know, a, a fortunate bump there, to be fair. But it's just that this time, Pablo was actually in a great position to take advantage of it. That's the difference. Niagara typically not being in good positioning to take advantage of mistakes. And that time, they were. So perfect adjustment from Niagara. And so now, series life on the line. They got half the game to make something of it. They've gotten, you know, the only two goals of the series in this game, so not out of the realm of possibility at all. I know casters like to stay optimistic and say, well, they might be able to do it, but this is the first game that I genuinely feel like Niagara has had a chance to be able to get a win done. So just gotta see how they're able to keep this up throughout the rest of this game and how they manage to slow down Wichita. That's a good way to do it as these kind of light touches in the midfield. And that dunk's actually gonna set up Aus, Pablo, kind of lurking in the middle for it. They'll get a 50 instead, and unfortunately, Pibro will be able to get to that one and we'll clear it out in the midfield. But look at these touches. They're, they're actually very, very solid right now from Niagara. It's something that we haven't been seeing. They're going for those 50-50s that we were talking about, and that's what I mean. Pablo going for that one and making it stick. What a dunk, Pibro. Just was alpha on top of by Pablo. Is just reading the clear perfectly. It's why it's so dangerous trying to clear the ball up the middle or across the middle in both car soccer and regular soccer. So one goal game, 90 seconds left. Niagara, I don't know what you were saying to each other in between games, but whatever it is, it's been working. And unfortunately, oh. it's been working for Swan Dog too. Gets a perfect deflection. And that pass will result in their fifth. Yeah, I mean, it was just 
so well done. I, and honestly, that pass, I, I think maybe a little bit fortunate, to be fair. <laughs> um, you know, just the deflection perfect, right? But nonetheless, you take those when you are given the opportunity. And, well, that opportunity clearly going to be taken advantage of by the likes of Wichita State. So it's, get, it's going to become a little bit more difficult now with two goals, uh, the advantage. Oh, it's pass in the middle. Schnitzel will get that. It's off the backboard. Pablo, the quick turn, no contact, just barely skirting by the side of it. And so now Zenova will try a flick over the top, and over the top it will go. Follow up off the post, and that'll be another couple misses as Niagara actually no boost remaining. Everyone just kind of looking at each other as no touch comes in, but those slight bits of hesitation, the no contact is just going to slow this play down. And more seconds gonna tick off the clock. 43 seconds remaining. Does Niagara have another one in him? Ost on the pass, but fortunately that one's just gonna go to the corner. Yeah, it was a great opportunity, but just a little bit of a missed shot. Because now the clear comes through. So easy does it as the counter attack is available. And this has just been very solid defense overall. Now the second half of this game. And just really well done here from Wichita. Sometimes you don't need an immediately dangerous shot. Just right here, Swan Dog just taps it just enough to beat that first defender. And the second and third have trouble with the rest. Doubling the lead here for Wichita. Or rather, doubling their overall goal lead here. Um, and so now, we're going to have to really just try to close this game out. I mean, 20 seconds remaining it should be a fairly easy task. And get saves by an Aragor don't do much. But Wichita, at the end of the day, maybe a little bit too much to handle that chip shot chip shot was very beautiful but it didn't, didn't really net anything and as the time ticks down you're just gonna just see the uh, the end of what is ultimately gonna be a 3-0 even though we do see that final goal you know listen you made the last one close right uh Niag niagara i think can walk away feeling good about themselves making the adjustments necessary ultimately it wasn't quick enough to net them a victory, but it certainly shows that they are a team that thinks heavily about what they're doing and, and how to fix mistakes as they happen throughout a series. Absolutely, and I think this is definitely something that Niagara can take a silver lining from. It's a game that, they, as you said, they did lose, but you have to look towards the positives. They weren't getting completely shut out there near the end. They were getting opportunities, and once they actually start getting more aggressive and penalizing mistakes, um, as you corrected uh, me earlier, and that's a good correction as well, because uh, the chances were there, um, and I'm glad they finally took it. So good job from Wichita, though, moving on with a 3-0 victory. And fortunately for all you viewers, that is not by far the last game that we're going to have on the dock for you guys. We're going to throw you guys to a brief break, and we'll be right back with Quinnip Quinnipiac University versus St. John's. Don't go anywhere. More EGF Rocket League on the way.
And welcome back, everybody. After that nice 3-0 victory, very clean from Wichita State, we have one of their players, Swan Dog, one of the subs for game number three in the call with uh, Vincent and I. Swan Dog, how are you feeling after that one? Uh, all right. I mean, sometimes you, you always feel like you can play better. So, uh, what do you feel like uh, you were? You guys were lacking in that, or rather yourself? Was that a comment on the team mentality or yourself? Uh, I feel like that's pretty much just me, but I maybe everybody gets that feeling. Yeah, well, I think what what Deja was asking there, expand on that. What what did you feel you needed to do better in in that matchup? Oh, um, you know, just passing really. Like we had some good passes in that third game. I I I was part of like four of them, but. I don't know. It's just I want it. I want it to feel better. <laughs> uh, always comms. Comms are always a comms are always something we can improve on. Mm. Is that something you guys go out of your way to really practice for the Wichita uh, team? You guys were definitely putting a lot of pressure. I was, uh, we were kind of applauding you guys for having very aggressive rotations. But is that something you guys really hold yourself to a high standard about? Is making sure you have good comms and the passes are actually connecting. It's it's because it seems like you guys are kind of. Or at least you're coming down on the side of it's one thing to get success, but it's not. It doesn't feel like you're earning it in the way that you'd like. Yeah, uh, we do. We do. We do try to focus on passing and comms a lot. Like I'd say that those are our two biggest focuses as a team compared to just like general rotations or like shooting or something. We like we like passing more than just solo plays or shots. Yeah, well, in that, um, over the course of the series, you guys had did a great job of taking advantage of mistakes that were put up uh, by Niagara University. But there in the last game, things got a little bit closer. Why do you think that was? What What was the adjustments that you guys saw from Niagara, and how did you guys deal with it? Uh, <laughs> well, I want to say we didn't really, they didn't score much on us until I came in, so I'll take some blame for that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I can't really, I don't really have a good explanation for that. I can't put my finger on it. It was just, there was that first goal they scored. I, I missed a read on the top ceiling corner. It was a funky read. And then the others, they just, they're good plays from Niagara, honestly. Yeah. Sometimes your opponent makes a good play and that's, that's what happens. But uh, nonetheless, um, walking out, rest of the season what's it looking like for you guys over at Wichita, Wichita State um what's the plan you know what kind of practice are you guys putting in um because it certainly looks like it on the server uh we we, tr we try to practice a few times a week at least but when we practice we just sometimes we'll do in-house scrims sometimes we'll split off into a few different groups because we have six people so we can kind of mix it up a lot m mess with a whole bunch of different uh team comps different chemistry mix-ups you know gotcha and it's good to see that you guys are really working on that stuff because at least when teams really work out uh that strategic aspect of their game i feel like you really see results and 3-0 is a pretty clean way to get that result so uh i'd like to thank swan dog uh thank you for coming on and letting us uh, pick your brain a little bit about that series yeah yeah thank you guys all right. And then we're going to throw uh, the rest of you guys uh, watching there at home or wherever you may be watching EGF. And we're going to throw you to a brief intermission. We'll get that next series up and running and be right back with more EGF Rocket League.
welcome back, everybody. I am still Danger Taco, and that is still Vincent. We are back with Quinnipiac University versus St. John's University for another matchup here. What can you tell us about this matchup, Vincent? Well, I, you know, I think this is this is basically going to be a, a matter of St. John's trying to fight back. They've had a little bit of a slow, well, a rough season. Not really a slow season, to be fair. One in ten right now. So they, they've struggled a bit. And now on th towards the back end, this is their opportunity to get some key victories when necessary. And specifically, Kinepiak University, they have... A, they have a four and six record, and and so they certainly are favored here uh, against St. John's. But again, we're always on the lookout for a potential upset, and I think the possibilities, right, with with the, the way the teams are, there's always that option, right? It's always possible to pick things up, and you never know what what you know where the what the skill level is of each individual player. Um, pop off plays happen all the time, so I'm on the lookout, but definitely. Basically, I'm looking to St. John for for what they're going to respond with, how they're going to to move forward. Yeah, at the end of the day, as we said, upsets happen all the time, and sometimes it's by the teams you least expect. So, hopefully, we can see something out of St. John's, as we desperately like to see some Ws down the stretch here, as they're going to try to defend the first foray into the attacking zone here from Quinnipiac as Quapo comes in with a shot and then right down the middle, the T-Rex explosion to mark their first goal. So not too much resistance out there on the first foray. I mean, it was a nice attempt right there at the clear, but just not enough speed on that ball. And it does very much allow for Guapo Chapo, what a great name, by the way, to uh, to pick well, up that goal. Time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now Grub is just going to throw that one down. Primal throw it right back off the backboard. And they're going to hesitate a little bit as Be Gone doesn't touch that one. Flick over the top by Smiggy. Grub trying to finish it off, oh. and they will. Good angle coming in there from Grub. I was so patient. Look at this. I love that. It's like, listen, I'm going to wait for you to make that little, you know, that move, that mistake, and then get right in there and a nice little flick over the top. Setting it up beautifully. It's already 2-0 for Knipiak against St. John's. Be gone trying to get something started. They have an air dribble going, so at least a little bit dangerous. Primal on the shot. It's not on target. Justin is going to have to try and follow that up, and no dice. Long click going down, but St. John's getting a little bit closer. At least that one seemed to be on target temporarily as Smiggy misses the touch there. Primal tries to jump on it and grub on the counter attack. So a little bit of ping pong going back and forth in, in the midfield here. And Quinnipiac is just going to send that one over the bar. So St. John's has another chance to knock it down and try to rebuild. And we're still oh. in the first minute. So a lot of action happening already. Just in time passes it. And he's going to have to finish off his own touch and gets him on the board. Yeah, and that demo there as well. It could have been the clear right, but no, perfectly played. and. There we go. On the board, St. John's already looking to respond, keeping things close. Now just in time, just going to slap that one immediately. Going for the double. They don't have it. Primal off the backboard again, but we gone. Just going to have to wait for that one out. Taps it. That's a decent power. Oh. It's more than enough, though, to get a goal. Tied game here, 85 seconds in. I mean, I don't know if I was expecting it, but the nice fadeaway shot, chipping it right over the heads of both the players, getting caught out in the net right there, not quite sure where to go, getting in each other's way. And once again, tied up. This is beautiful stuff early in this game. It's back and forth. As I was saying, St. John's on the field themselves, they'll be able to get some results and a good pass coming in. Number three on the way. They're gonna have to wait a little bit just off target as St. John's looking reinvigorated and maybe Quinnipiac maybe taking their foot off the gas a little bit, maybe not expecting some of these hits coming through as clean as they have been. As another ball coming down in the midfield potentially is just in time. The pass across, Primal's there off the bar and in for the third. St. John, they are looking solid right now. I mean, look at this, just Basic, easy play uh, off the back of the corner. Nice touch off the back wall and into the waiting arms of Primal, making things look pretty simple. And listen, you don't have to make it flashy. That's just a simple, basic play here. And it, it, I mean, it shows results. That's exactly what you need. 
Now it seems like Benipiak is struggling to be able to get this out of their half as another one's going to get hit into their corner. Just in time, serves it across. Begone waiting for it, but instead will play a little bit passive. All of St. John's retreating back to their own half. More than happy to just wait this out. They're going to milk this lead as we're approaching half time. And Benipiak is really beyond their first couple uh, touches into the attacking third they really haven't had many other opportunities in fact they've really just been trying to fend off the st john's team as another shot comes in from primal and now grub is trying to work it down with a flick but it just seems like every single time st john's is uh putting some good pressure getting a bumper on the ball yeah i mean listen this has been beautiful and another potential shot on goal but just in time missing that one makes it a little bit more difficult and so now uh, this is a counter attack grub looking for it and Begon is going to be able to get that save out. Grub into the middle just in time. Is there no touch and neither from Samegi coming in. So that one will be a double whiff there. And now a worked out ball into the midfield. Grub will leave it for now. Primal gathers the weak clear off of the post. Gets their own pass. Holds it up for Justin and it's 50 to side. The deflection will go to, right to Begon. So really no rest here for the defense as another one is coming right back across their goal. Smiggy has to wipe some sweat off the brow, I'm sure, but they are able to get that away, and Grub sends that back out into the corner. Well, I mean, and you saw that there. St. John's honestly just used that push to, to collect a, a little bit of extra boost and, and letting the, the other two players who are a little bit low come back, and, and then they, they're reinvigorated, come back in for a solid defense. They're playing with a lot of poise at the moment, St. John's. Now, Guapo. It's going to gather this one, sends it across. It's a great pass, but a better save just in time was ready for the challenge. Grub's trying to turn into midfield, try to keep some pressure, but ultimately will go to the corner yet again. And Justin will cut that pass off. Primal too fast to it off the bar. They can't get the double and Grub will be able to get that to the sideline. St. John's, they started slow, but they are going pedal to the metal here. Well, that and another great clear as well for St. John's. The 30 seconds remaining, it's just do or die time. Need to pick up a goal if you're Knipiak, but honestly, it's not looked that great. And <laughs> right as we say that, a little caster's curse. Oh, Ball to man. flex in and the bounce shot, able to get going here. Grub combining, it combined with a pool shot from the two teammates. Well, we do say teamwork gets some goals. Uh, maybe not quite like that though. I mean, that bump, right? You just, you aren't expecting that if you're the defender. It it turns that ball a little bit weird. And so you're just off. And that's just what happens. Unfortunate there for St. John's. The giveaway primal, not the best touch though. It's just gonna roll short. And now at the dying seconds, can Quinnipiac rescue this game and maybe steal a win? Guapo with the shot on the near post, but it's gonna be wide. The save is made just in case. Ball's still up though at zero seconds. Are we looking for an overtime in game number one? We are. What a game number one. And really looking at the standings on paper, this game is a, quite the pleasant surprise. It absolutely is. I didn't think we were gonna see that, especially not after those first two goals. It looked as if they were styling, but easy does it. St. John's coming back in and they already are on the attack here in the overtime period. Be gone following it near post that's off Grub. Gets dunked there by Primal. Guapo's is trying to get it out. That's a giveaway. Justin is there and they're gonna bury it. St. John's one in 10 is now one in O in this series. Absolutely brilliant stuff. We see it right now coming back through. It was just the perfect touch and not able to get back in time where the entirety of Knipiak, and like you said, one in 10, but up one in this series. Absolutely brilliant stuff there from St. John's, taking things away and take a look, the shots on goal. It's 11 there for St. John's, just six, two apiece for every player on the Knipiak side. And honestly, like you said, who could have guessed that we would have seen this one? I absolutely love series like this where i'm curious to see now going into game number two if quinnipiac was just a little bit shocked because you know sometimes you check the standings you don't expect much out of your opponent you take it a little soft and then you have to speed up through the rest of the game so headed into game number two quinnipiac has definitely got a little bit shocked got a, maybe a little bit of a sucker punch to the nose so once they clean that up maybe we'll see a little bit different but st john's i mean the just 
uh, it, I love the style of offense that is almost like Wichita State was just playing. Just throw everything forward <laughs> and eventually goals will fall in. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said then, when it works, it's just brilliant to watch, right? But sometimes you do get punished for it, and we did see that happen a couple of times. But now, like you said, are we going to see Knipiak make some adjustments? Are they going to look a little bit different? But honestly, I don't know, because remember, those first two goals look beautiful. We're just going to add some more. Just in time, floats one in right off the kickoff. I mean, come on. This is just, this is how you do it. This is Rocket League. This is easy, does it? And I mean, yes, a bit of a, a mistake, just to be fair, from Knipiak leaving that net open. But you think you're going to win that 50-50 and just don't. Now the long clear coming from Grub. Justin's not able to get that one. Smiggy may be able to put it on target. Primal call into action with a save. All three players for St. John on the goal line for that one. So quite the slim margins to be able to tuck that shot in. Smiggy is able to tuck that one in right inside the near post. Just the failure to clear from St. John's will lead to the equalizer. And, you know, listen, keeping it close here, Knipiak, and that was just a great look, seeing that both those players overcommitting on the right, on the right side of the ball and takes advantage, putting it in the lower left, exactly what you want to see from Smiggy. Just in time, going for the air dribble. They don't quite get the touch, and it's going to get deflected in the middle. Grub on the follow, not the strongest, goes through the bump. Nothing found there as it will roll to the sideline. Off the backboard, no touches coming in from there. Guapo Chapo, though, gets to it a little quicker, and that's a second. Oh, my goodness. This is brilliant to watch, and everybody just kind of missing on that first touch, right? And then the follow-up is there. Guapo Chapo not going to be whiffing that one and able to pick up that goal. Makes it up one for Knipiak. It's 2-1 the scoreline. Dion will send that on onto the backboard and almost tucks it in his primal, but no finish. A lot of confusion going on in the blue half here is a lot of players bumping around right in front of the net. They will be able to flick it out temporarily as Begon over the top. Guapo caught in no man's land and an equalizer just back and forth. Look at the tee up. Look at that for primal. Absolutely wonderful. Just putting them in prime position with that assist. And of course, not missing that open net. Begonator, just beautiful stuff. And we're, and shockingly, we're only a minute in. I looked at the time, she kind of shocked. I thought we'd be have a little bit more off, but both these teams just scoring rapid fire here. So might be in for Quite the goal total if this keeps up, and it just might, but Smiggy maybe expect that to bounce out a little bit more instead of just hugging the line like that. So we're going to be getting a little bit of slowdown here in the goal total, but both these teams really going for the jugular as Smiggy not slowing down as the rest of the players haven't been either. Guapo Chapo, no touch there, and now we're going to see a little bit of a lull as Grub's just going to throw that one, no one around, and another ball out, but... Ball's really loving, uh, really, this magnetic quality of that that uh, St. John's back right corner as Grub will take another one over there and Primal will shut it back down again. I mean, they're just looking for that, that perfect touch, right, to center the ball and then knock it right in. But now we're back to the other side. So another opportunity for St. John's to put the, goal, the ball in the back of the net. A little bit of hesitation. Guapo, instead of clearing it up, will try to play some possession, gets the corner boost but the giveaway ultimately from Justin into the middle, Primal decides to turn around. They're kind of hesitating on this one. They'll instead take a 50. So both teams maybe trying to slow down, realizing that it's not is going to be just that simple sometimes, but maybe a simple pass like that is what you need. Just in time, we'll bury it for three. You talked about the hesitation, right? But look at this, not a question. The, the, the fast decision-making right there from St. John's, Primal in particular, to knock it down off the pitch and straight into the waiting arms. Just in time, absolutely brilliant. And with that, they retake the lead. St. John's in another great position to start to run away with things with just about two and a half minutes left on the clock. I'm curious to see what that Quinnipiac squad has in their pockets. <laughs> And really trying to react to stuff like this is can't be too easy as Primal 
Gets another shot. That interesting pinch down field I thought might throw things off and certainly it did, but Quinnipiac is holding strong. It really seems like it's gonna have to take passes from St. John's or just interesting touches like that. Primal with the double tap off the ground. I'm not gonna lie. I saw Primal going for something. Like, what, what is that? He's so far up. What's going on? But I think that as confused as I was, the entirety of Knipiak was even more confused. They just didn't know how that was going to bounce, how he's going to play it, maybe trying for the, the, the fadeaway shot that we saw earlier. And that, in the back of their minds, made it difficult. And now a big mistake there for Knipiak. St. John's retake and another nice goal. Everyone clumps up and then everyone separates. And the only person remaining is Bagonjader. Just slaps one right on target for five and you said st john's might run away with it i thought that might have been a little bit too early because the game was still close but now st john's really pouring on the pressure and now pouring on the goals as well still two minutes remaining and might be able to make a statement here in game two if they can open this up even further i mean yeah they made it let's be honest they made a statement back in game one mate they're making a second statement and it is just as loud just as clear and they're staking their claim to a potential victory in this game it's now a long ball coming up there guapo is struggling with it justin not able to fit it by him gone off the near post primals there could save by guapo it'll be deflected and they're really going to need that as they enter the final 75 seconds here and they're going to need something to be able to give them some momentum in this game, but they're not gonna find it there. In fact, they're not gonna find it anywhere. Primal all the way down. They don't finish, but gone off the bar and they're not gonna finish either. Not like they need it. Still three goals with 60 to go. I mean, a big missed opportunity, right? But I mean, even despite the fact that Grub had some great aerials, now the double tap off the backboard. Beyond Shader with another, that's gonna be the hat trick. The classic Rocket League skill level at the high level. You miss the easy stuff, but come on, double <laughs> tap, easy. Hit those in training all the time. So open it up that four goal margin here. And Grenipiak has got to be thinking, is this really the same St. John squad that's been playing all season? Because they are really sweating down the stretch here. I mean, yeah, I, honestly, I'd feel the same way. Another great shot on target from outside the paint. And that is beautiful stuff for Primal pulling it back, making it look easy, and nobody's there. Guapo Chapo had the opportunity, but I don't think had any boost is the problem. It's now with a five goal margin, you're gonna have to stop the bleeding, but if you're St. John's, I think they're just trying to pour it on it. If anything, it's just a mental game at this point, just trying to break the will of your opponents as another ball is gonna zing off the crossbar and just add to their already impressive shot total with 30 seconds to go. They're sitting at 14 shots for that orange side. It's really, as we said, a statement made in game number one, but this is uh, really quite the proclamation screaming from the mountaintops. Yeah, I mean, you know, what better way to make a statement but with your gameplay? That's exactly what's happened with 10 seconds now. I mean, of course, it's impossible really to come back from this, but Quinnipiac maybe can score something to just take, take their, uh, take it easy into the next game, trying to find it. And they do pick up the one, so, it's three to seven ultimately, but that game was dominant. And of course that hat trick from Beyond Jader, beautiful stuff. As a Smiggy coming through with that last second goal. And honestly, I think those are valuable if only just to show that this team is in fact mortal and you can get some more goals on them. But four goal margin, that's going to sting in St. John's. It, it just, we're talking about it pre-game off camera that this is going to be a tough series. But right now, I didn't expect the tough series was going to have to be from Quinnipiac. They're the ones that are going to have to come back as they are now on match point on the verge of losing the series. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to have to do the, the the fabled reverse sweep, right? Potentially. that That's what makes this so interesting. And, and you can always see the upsets, right? But you don't always expect to see it happen. That's what's beautiful. And St. John's just taking it and making it look easy. By the way, Primal had four assists there in that last game, too. I mean, and some of those were brilliant looking. That one where where he he bounced it off of, uh, he got the stop right, and then bounced it up just perfectly. Uh, T ended up for his teammate to knock it in. Oh, that was just wonderful right there in the midfield as we get into game three. 
And unfortunately, we're actually going to have to go to a brief hold here as a player on St. John's. Maybe just work on their computer overtime. Game has crashed, so we're going to have to remake a lobby real quick for them. But if anything, this is a might just do an, a kind of an ice on St. John's because uh, that's exactly what Quinnipiac would actually kind of hope for. Maybe more time just to sit down and talk. Rocket League is a kind of brutal game. You only, only have 60 seconds in between every game in the series to really collect your thoughts and think through things maybe not the best way to you know sit down do a coaching session talk about what you're doing but what are you noticing from Quinnipiac or rather what aren't you seeing that St. John's is uh doing that is really working to their favor well I, I think it, it it really has just come down to where those those 50 50 balls are available right um St. John's are just running at them i mean throwing everything at them and uh when whenever you have that sort of play style and you're playing with confidence it oftentimes means that you're going to be winning those out and and that's what's been happening thus far knapiak just not been able to to really adjust to that pace of play that's the, the thing a, a big pace difference right between the way st john's is looking to play and has been playing and the way that realistically uh we've been watching knipiak play throughout they've just not been on on the same page and whenever we see the defensive sides come out it's not been bad at all from knipiak actually considering the amount of shots on goal it's surprising that there was only seven of them in that last game. Um, but it was just that whenever, honestly, a, a little bit the same as what we were seeing, not to the same degree, to be fair, um, for, for what was happening to Niagara in the last game, where whenever they get clears, uh, we just don't see Kanipiak really in positions to take advantage of them. And when they are, it's St. John's winning out the 50-50. The and this is... Uh... Crucial game, obviously, because of the match point, but I think it's also just Quinnipiac has had more time to talk, and I am really curious about the frustration level because, of course, you are coming in on a team that, on paper, you should be winning against, and they're kind of taking it to you, especially in that game number two, but just the frustration of knowing that you've had opportunities. It's not just you've been completely shut out. Like, you've had opportunities to score, and then some of them just go a little bit off on the near post, or maybe you put them over the bar, or maybe you just don't have someone up close enough to be able to finish the opportunity, but... St. John's has. They've just been able to pour on pressure and then always have someone in that right position. So tactically, I think uh, you mentioned that they've had players around and the defensive uh, play has been good enough. It's just at the end of the day, no defense can hold forever. You're going to get scored on. And if they can tighten that up and maybe press on offense a little cleaner, get those opportunities a little bit more on target, I think it can be a very different series. So headed into game number three, it's really on Winnipeg at this point to see if they can do anything to stop the St. John's roster. Yeah, the key here, keep it out of their own zone. Knipiak need to make this an offensive play on the other side of the ball, and that is not what we have seen here in the opening matchup. Less than 10 seconds in, and already a goal for Beyond Jader. It's just so quick. It's nine seconds in. The very first pass and shot for St. John's is going to go straight in, and just a struggle there from Quinnipiac. They're not able to quite get there in time. And it's, uh, one thing that I've loved about the Rocket League meta is you think about kickoff goals and historically it was always a 1v1 thing to worry about. But now in 3v3, we notice you lose a ball to the sideline and then bang, pass right off your backboard and you get scored on. So you really have to be careful at all uh, really points of the game. There really is no time where you can just kind of sit back and relax. Exactly. And, and been doing a great job of that St. John's. Not not ever sitting back and relaxing, getting aggressive, and getting the goal scored. So Primal's gonna send one real deep down the field, and they're also gonna oh. get cool. The dunk as well to the back post for a second. Unbelievable touch there. I mean, look at it. It's just a great, great commitment, honestly, from Primal. That's where we've seen Primal doing their best work in general. Those, those midfield or, or um, you know, corner side commitments, just able to tee up either the teammate or, in this case, themselves for the double touch and easy shot on goal. Some nice 58 to round things out. Always nice when it's not just always a shot. You're getting that somewhat physical play there on the dunk, but. Kripiak is not out of it yet. It's still only the first minute gone. And Spiggy will get a nice dribble there and a 50. It'll roll up the side wall, but Papa's actually gonna have to work their way all the way back up to be able to keep pressure off the sideline. Grub, nice shot, dunk down, tucks it by one or so I thought. Begone, able to get that final touch, but 
these deep rotations from Nubi Nubiak really only helping when they get a ball served to them, but ultimately not able to keep pressure. Bagan will be able to take that into the other half. Yeah, and these have just been very solid balls overall from both sides, but Knipiak has done a pretty good job, even though they're down two, of playing a little bit more aggressively and, and keeping the ball in the offensive zone much more often in this in this third game. Now Smiggy is going to send that one into the corner. A little bit of a desperation clear there as Guapo will try to follow it up, but bumped out of the way. They're going to have to chase this one down as Justin screaming down on their backside there, almost chasing that one all the way down. Begone passes it upfield. Justin turns around, but a little too late. Going to be a little bit of a giveaway to Smiggy, and we're seeing a little bit of a lull in this game here as both these teams are really trying to chisel away at each other. Still, St. John's on the pressure, always putting more and more uh, put, uh, balls downfield and really making Quinnipiac sweat here, but we're really only at halftime. Two goal lead, very much doable at this point. Absolutely, and it seems to me like neither team really want to make a mistake right now, playing things a little bit more passively, not really doing that same style where we've been seeing from St. Johnson just throwing themselves at the ball, three player commits, all that kind of stuff. Right now, a lot more passive. You can see one player getting aggressive, that was Primal, two still in the back line, and only when the demo comes in do they start to move forward. Kind of a worm burner down the sideline here as Primal and Bagan will be combining with each other here. Grub. Gets dunked. Justin up for it. Tries to get it over. Will deflect it instead. Guapo trying to chase it down. Not the best touch, though. Primal takes the air for the air dribble. They're going to keep it low. The high flick. It's a dangerous position. Can Bagan put that one in off the bar? Justin on the Ooh. follow. The crossbar gets hit again. And a desperation touch, unfortunately, might have resulted in an own goal. Justin on the credit. I mean, honestly, I, I, what, what are we looking at? It was just like one, one really hard shot miss, and then an easy shot miss, and then it was unfortunately an on goal in, in attempt to try and clear things away. Honestly, not much that you could have done there, you know, defensively, but still, so crazy to see that go down. Now another ball in the middle, no touch. Maybe thinking better of it as they let that one drift to the far corner. Gone's going to have to put pressure and really hats off to St. John's. They've really been able to apply the pressure and keep it. But now Quinnipiac almost certainty getting a goal is going to be able to put that wide somehow. 0-3 still as we're approaching 70 seconds remaining and that one's got to hurt. Yeah, it does. And we're approaching that time frame where it's, it's almost too late to get back into things. So we need to see a goal here very soon for Knipiak if they want to keep, stay with an opportunity to win this one out. Now, Justin Time is actually going for the demo and Smee made him hesitate just enough as this Quinnipiac side is trying to flail at it. Demo on the last defender though, Bagan up for it. Good save to the side. Justin on the follow will be able to extend the play up and Primal will put another one away, 4-0 with 36 seconds. What a show being put on by St. John's. I mean, yeah, this is just honestly beautiful to watch. I, we, we, of course, didn't expect this coming in, but it seems like now, at least at this point, it's just St. John's having a, a grasp of every single stage of the game and, and getting the better of Knipiak overall, even though Knipiak, I think, have been doing a much better job on the offense. That has given up some of their defensive capabilities, I think. Yeah, especially in game number two, I felt like we had a much closer game in, uh, at time uh, because Quinnipiac was putting on pressure. But at this game, it just seems like they're so focused on not getting countered that they were almost playing a little bit timid. And at the end of the day, a timid team is going to get eaten right up. And St. John's ate very well tonight. That will close out this series once this ball hits the ground. A 3-0 win out of nowhere for St. John University. And Quinnipiac's going to have to wait another week to be able to wash this taste out of their mouth. I mean, yeah, I, I think you're going to the scrim rooms thinking, all right, let, let's find a team that we should be and let's just smack all over them because, <laughs> unfortunately, they are going to go home a little bit sad today. That's a 3-0 sweep for St. John's. The underdogs, 1-10 on the season. Danger Taco, I just can't believe it. And I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Every time, I mean, pretty much any eSport, honestly. Um, whoever is playing the fastest um, tends to win. 
And right there, St. John's playing with speed, momentum, tempo, all of the synonyms that you want to bring in. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Yeah, certainly so. And it's, it's something that I'm really curious about to see what the mental side is really like. So hopefully we'll be able to get an interview with a player from St. John's after this. But we will be throwing you guys to a brief break as we ready that up. But catch your breath. We'll be right back with a little bit more insight from St. John's. We actually were going with someone else, but by popular demand from the chat, we do have Beg and Jader in the interview here to get some feedback about how St. John really pulled off what they really just came away with, coming away with a 3-0 win. And Beg and Jader, I got to start off by saying, how do you feel about this series? And how did what's, what was the mindset coming in here? Because you guys had struggled earlier on the season. Well, coming into the interview... Coming into the game, it was kind of tough because we didn't have much time to prepare as a team. I just got added to the team recently, but we got a bunch of scrims in before. Uh, we came in knowing that we were playing also another new team. New roster hasn't didn't play last split, and we just came in aggressive, stayed calming the whole time, and we got the win. I, I mean, hold on. I just need to say aggressive – Absolutely. You guys just continually put pressure on the defense of Knipiak throughout that game. And it, it kind of seemed as if we, I think we, the, the, verbology that we were using uh, here on the desk was that you guys were just kind of throwing yourself at the ball, um, able to get get the easy goals with the aggressive plays. Was that the mindset going in? Was that y'all's strategy or did it just kind of happen that way? Uh, I mean, I think, I think it just kind of happened like that. Uh, we're a pretty aggressive team. We all like to score. Sure, we're defensive-minded, but we all like to get wins, and the only way to do that is through scoring. So we thought, you know, keeping constant pressure is the best way to get the win, and that's exactly what we did. Well, scoring, you did a lot of. Picking up a hat trick, by the way, three goals in game number one. How did that feel? Was it, was it great to get started in, 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 in that fashion in a game where you guys on paper are the underdogs? Uh, it was pretty great, actually. You know, we come in, we're not expecting anything crazy because, you know, we haven't been doing too well. But to actually solidify a great win, score a bunch of goals, and just be dominant is the best feeling. 
And I got to wonder uh, if I'm not entirely sure if you planned for this or you put out the word, but you had a mountain of fans in the chat cheering you on and hyping you up. <laughs> granted, you're maybe not reading the chat while the game is going on, but I'm curious. Do you feel like you get fuel knowing that you're getting hyped up and you have all these people watching you and kind of get that uh, performance boost out of that? Uh, I'd say it's definitely a plus. You know, always having people supporting you is fun, but I actually had no idea I'd have such support <laughs> in the chat. I only told, like, one person I was playing, but to see them show up is truly heartwarming. Yeah, I mean, that that's just amazing. You, lo you love to see that, and, and honestly, huge shout-out to everybody in the chat who did show up to cheer you on. Um, moving forward, honestly, I want to know, so you guys obviously started started out slow. I mean, at, at a 1 in 10, now 2 in 10, though. Um you know, what does the rest of the, the season look like for you guys? Because from my perspective, if you guys pull up like that to more matches, I think we could be seeing, you know, at the very least a middle of the pack roster as we move towards the playoffs. Uh, I mean, coming into the first game, it was a little slow. The nerves were a little high. Uh, we settled in eventually, and I think we do have a pretty decent future. You know, uh, there's a bunch of great teams in the league, but I think we can compete with them and get a pretty good spot. All right. Good to hear thing uh, from you, uh, Megan Jader. And congrats on the win. Best of luck going forward. And uh, we'll let you go. Thanks for sitting down and talking to us. Thank you, guys. All right. And we'll be right back as we throw you guys to another intermission as we ready up the next game. The RIT Tigers going up against the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. So we're going to throw you to a brief break and we'll be right back. Please do not go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. I am still Danger Tackle on the desk, bringing you some EGF Rocket League. However, we are now joined by a Death Cat, a Quantum Death Cat. How are you doing, my friend, as we are going to be bringing these lovely people in chat, RIT versus Cincinnati? I'm like Schrodinger's cat. I pop in and I pop out. You don't know if I'm going to be here or not every single game that happens, you know? I was here for the first two, then I left for the next two, then now I'm back for the next three uh, for tonight. And uh, apparently there have been some really good games tonight that I've Ooh. missed. And not just the first two that I did, the next two afterwards were pretty good. So, so uh, re let's recap those before we go into this game. Yeah, and we've seen some uh, interesting matches for sure, but the ones that like I was covering, I mean, we saw a 3-0 victory from a squad that I hadn't really heard as much about for sure. But I mean, coming in with those two games uh, off the bat, I mean, you were seeing some interesting things. But I think for me, the storyline uh, that I was most shocked by is the new roster from St. John's making waves in the previous series, uh, really coming out of nowhere. And I mean, both me and Vincent were just in the chat kind of, shocked looking at each other we could barely kind of like believe our eyes so really just shows that the the depth of egf is a uh, really always kind of in flux all you saw was 10 million uh, 10 million fireflies and uh <laughs> quinnipiac yeah they're 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 not a nowhere team right they're they're mm -hmm. not exactly mid-pack but like they're 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 there they're on the fringes of making the playoffs right so st john's coming in and just winning that game outright is quite impressive indeed and so we're going to go into this game, and as you told me, you, we have no idea what's going to happen in this one. Uh, certainly not, but definitely some top-tier talent here is RIT, historically a collegiate program with a lot of depth, and this team is no exception. Coming in at number three in the, the overall standings here for the EGF collegiate scene, and they're showing with a lot of speed right here as Akon almost just beats out all three players there. They're getting to the ball very well, but uh, so far, RIT played with a lot of pace, but Cincinnati not to be counted out. Also a new team and technically undefeated. Only uh, one goal a game coming in here as they've entered uh, the spring split. But I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to this game. It's, it's hard to predict games like this, but that's also the best way to go into games. So now we have two different teams here. In blue, oh, I think you have the, uh, uh, the team's reversed uh, streamer. Uh, you have UC, right? The University of Cincinnati in blue. And RIT in orange, though that is switched on the top right now. Uh, that will be switched out in just a little bit's time there. There we go. And quick to like, we got we got it all covered as uh, Thank you, RIT is going to send another one kind of right down onto the sideline, but will be deflected out. Ezio in the middle to Barry. So quick passing plays coming out from both squads as Kind of this uh, opening chess game has opened up, but Joey Dubs trying to open up the game, but Sep were inches away from that one. And that one's gonna just graze off the bumper and go wide. And uh, RIT, known for their quick starts, known for uh, just getting the ball rolling and not giving any breathing room to their opponents. Right now, Cincinnati are keeping up for the moment. Let's see if they can, because if RIT make this a very tough 15 minutes for them, it's not going to be very fun, but right now in the first two minutes, it's it's definitely been on more on their side. Now oh, Akon going up for this one. Good pass down to Joey Dubs on target. Not enough speed and placement maybe could have helped out a little bit more as Ezio was able to work their way over to it as now D hacks in the corner trying to slow things down. Everyone from RIT just waiting at midfield. Sebward will be able to cut something out for now. Deflection there, Akon, no touch, and now Diax on the counter. So back and forth, really both these teams going for very interesting plays, but nothing working out. We've hit half time and both teams taking some licks, but really no goals on the board yet. They're taking some licks, but they're not licking off their wounds, you know? There's mm -hmm. nothing really having been made. There's a battle going on, but neither have scratched each other really. Right, there's been a few opportunities here and there. Ezio goes for a bump in the air there, and it just doesn't pop, uh, pop through. Oh my goodness, these are intricate plays going on for both of these teams. They're trying to find the small things, because it's very obvious from the get-go here that very obvious, e even set-up plays might not work on these guys. Sometimes games like this are really only separated by one of two things. It's either a team making a mistake or someone pulling something absolutely fantastic out of their hat. And right now, RIT is going to try something fantastic on the passing play, but 
just a little bit too slow. And now Ezio with an open shot. Joey Dubs getting back just in time. He'll be able to get that touch away as Dx will just lob one into the middle, get a dunk, but again to the corner. So both teams playing a little bit frantic. I think they both can sense that there's a goal incoming, but really to whom it's going to be credited is beyond both of them. The thing you're trying to uh, find is blood in the water. They're, they smell blood <laughs> in the water for sure, but it, it's, oh my goodness, look at how much blood has been spilt so far with three demos in the last, what felt like 10 seconds. And uh, a, a little bit of, uh, of change of the guard. It feels like RIT, though they are trying, they're, they've uh, been improvising, right? They've done a few solo plays and a few pass uh solid passing plays you, you're just finding nothing so far so you're changing it up right if you're rit and cincinnati are just answering the bell every time and they're answering a lot of these challenges very well a lot of high lobs from rit trying to bait in a challenge and bait it does the problem is uh the bait's kind of biting back there is they're getting great dunks and preventing it really for a lot of forward progress from rit and they have opened up a little bit of open space here, but D-Hacks just lobs it down, and instead Sepward will get another clear. Final 10 seconds as we're approaching it, and Cincinnati and RIT definitely looking too even, maybe too even to separate normal time. Overtime kind of looming for them. We'll have to see if maybe they have one more in their kind of bag of tricks here as Joey Dubs up to eight con. They get a decent deflection. Sepward, last back, are they gonna go? They'll play it passive and the passivity will result in an overtime game one, but really to tear two teams like this apart, you really can't have any other option. Uh, no, not whatsoever. Neither team is giving each other an inch. The rotations have been perfect despite the demos that have been happening. I don't know if you've noticed, but these demos normally taking, uh, what is it? Players out of the play and mistakes on rotation. We did not see a single rotational mistake that is just an amazing play here to pass it to Akon. Instead of getting the shot off the back wall like it was expected, he goes for it earlier, gets it off into the corner. This is beautiful. And really, that great play as Joey Dubs is actually lurking just out of the kind of camera view of that last defender. DX went up somewhat calmly, thinking that it was going to be a very straightforward touch, but the touch around him does open up just enough. And Akon, the supersonic legend tag, coming in with the goal there. So RIT will take it. But even though that overtime seemed like it was over in a flash, I mean, that game, as we say, hyper even. Even on shots, even uh, almost even on saves, Cincinnati just getting edged out a, a little bit with some more. But really, it's going to take quite a lot in this series to tear these teams apart, I'm predicting, because this game one, if it's any indication, it's it'll be very interesting to uh, see what's really in the bag here because Cincinnati I wouldn't say they were being stifled but really both teams were just kind of trying to poke around and see if there was really what was working and nothing really was mm -hmm. and if you uh, who made the assist there because that play by by the passer here right gets to the ball early which is the important part right because if this doesn't go off the corner right this is an equal 50 and because he puts it off into the corner by hitting it earlier, he still manages to pass it back out to Aitkon, who's able to read this perfectly. And that's that's what makes the difference, right? It's such an intricate small play like that that was going to make the difference. And that's what I uh, I tried to say earlier. I don't know if I said it properly uh, or explained myself properly because both of these teams were absolutely neck and neck. It's not going to be something huge that makes the difference. It's going to be a small play like that where it just catches the other team off guard. Now demo on the back line. D-Hacks will be able to put it away as RIT getting sent to the Shadow Realm and the other two defenders is really not able to cover in time. That is an Ooh. amazing <laughs> bump on Sebward and the demo as well coming in. Akon was the only able player and he was in midfield when that shot came, the first one. When the rebound shot came as well, he was trying to rotate back in, but he was just praying that the ball would hit his car. It did not. And Cincinnati have a lead. And actually, I, I was uh, kind of interrupted you for a second. I apologize. I just had to let out a little ooh as I didn't realize Sepward actually got bumped there. So Cincinnati going to an interesting strategy. Sometimes you struggle to pass around it. So why don't you just go through them and clear them out of the way? And <laughs> apparently that strategy is one that did work out as Cincinnati will be able to escape with a goal and then escape with a save and clear there as 
couple uh, demos of their own and some hijinks going on in front of the Cincinnati box, but will be able to clear their line. So first minute come and gone, and already we're seeing a difference from game number one. Someone already on the board, and now it's on RIT to be able to answer the calls, as it were, going forward in this game. And by now, Cincinnati kind of up to the task, but RIT never out of the equation off the bar, and Ezio into the midfield. Sepward's going to pick it up in midfield as well. That is very beautiful indeed, but I mean, the, the tight down defense, the rotations are crisp and clear. We know who's going for what. These guys are not double committing. Neither team has made that kind of mistake just yet. Both teams have been just caught off guard by small, tiny intricacies. And that's what's made the difference so far in this series. And as time goes on, let's see who can change the game plan just that little bit more, be the most uh, impro uh, improvisable team. I don't know how you can say that otherwise, because D-Hacks, he finds it, and it's a shot that you wouldn't expect. You expect this to be a pass if you're RIT. This is a beautiful shot. Yeah, DX just doing sometimes the hardest job, just making sure you put the net ball on the open net as Akon kind of unexpectedly trying to play quick off of their teammates' touch, just not able to get to the ball in time. And DX ever the opportunist now, coming in as third man on the first and now burying the open net for their second. So RIT up one game, needs to fight their way back. This is a one way to do it, but Joey Dove's not getting contact. Sevward from the tough angle, nothing doing. And Joey tries to tap it down, but ultimately another giveaway. And since he has control of the ball after this bounce. Hey, listen, uh, so far Cincinnati have been pretty good. Honestly, I've, I'm thoroughly impressed. If they joined during the fall season and showed this kind of form, they would be well, right where RIT are, I think, right? And RIT right now should be sweating. This brand new team, right, are down by one game, but they're they're up by two goals in game two here. Very close to tying it at this point because we've only seen three goals in a series that has played, that will play 10 minutes in the next two. So let's see what they can do here. Let's see what, uh, what else Cincinnati can bring or how RIT can answer these guys. Yeah, number two, they've definitely looked a little worse for wear RIT. They've been struggling to put anything too dangerous. Most of their shots have been really just like that last touch, just a ball upfield that has gone on target, but not necessarily making any of the Cincinnati players really panic too much. So lest a mistake comes out from the Bearcats, it's really going to continue uh, as it has been developing as Sebward again tries to get a shot off for RIT, but it's just going to be turned away. Ah. Demo on the last defender, Akon heroically gets a save, but only slows it down for D-Hack to try again. So some more pressure coming from Cincy. Might not go in, but it's burning a lot of time off that clock. Not just burning time, it's burning... I can't say brain power exactly, but <laughs> it's burning the energy, right? Because, oh my God, we need to go back on defense again, right? We need to rotate back here because they demoed our last man, right? And they're coming down with two players. Both of us need to rotate in. And both of us need to make a save. And that's exactly what Akon and Sebward did. But it's it, it burns the mental capacity at that point, right? Because you can't get an offensive mindset if you're always on the defense and worried about your defense. And nice pass in the midfield, but maybe Akon expecting that to be a little bit higher or maybe a little bit slower. Either way, you're going to have to get turned away again. 35 seconds remaining for RIT to get maybe one for the road or... At least, hopefully, something quick that they can build off of. Double commit coming in here. Sebward as the last player back. Maybe ops not for the shot, but just trying to keep possession, throwing it to the corner. So now, just going back to the drawing board, it just seems like RIT, you can see them playing a little bit more frantic. This ball's just kind of getting thrown up field. It doesn't have much purpose to it. And I wonder if they're feeling a little shook right now. Bearcats coming out with a lot of tenacity, and uh, maybe the Tigers just do not have the answer right now just surprising indeed because you saw RIT how well they were able to manage themselves how they were able to change up their gameplay and that didn't happen in game two here and I think part of that at least for me is just coming down to the fact that RIT if you look at those shots six shots by Sebward and two from Akon for you know obviously a total of eight but ultimately I can't really think of any where Cincinnati was really struggling or really reaching for it or uh, really sweating at all. It felt like most of them were just kind of routinely turned to the corner, cleared back upfield. I think 
Martinez to get back into this. What won them game number one was those cheeky passing plays. It was getting to the ball quickly, hitting it in unpredictable ways. I don't think there was really anything unpredictable about this game number two. And I think Cincinnati punished them for that. So head into game number three, I'm, I'm curious to see if RIT really goes back to that game one mentality or if maybe they're just a little bit more intimidated, going to play, continue playing a little bit timid. Now, fun fact is that, well, there's only been three goals this entire series so far. RIT have still been held scoreless in regulation, right? So mm -hmm. that's practically 10 minutes without scoring a goal. Yes, you found one in overtime, but if Cincinnati find one in regulation there, that's another loss, right? So you definitely need to find something if you are this RIT team because, well, you've been held off the Ooh. score sheet twice. And now Cincinnati are starting off strong on top of that. You need to answer right away here. That's a beautiful pass coming down right into the waiting bumper of Barry. But Dihax getting it done last game, getting both goals for Cincinnati and now turning into the assist machine here as they will be able to pump one out there for their teammate. And right off the bat, it's one thing to get a reset kind of mentally, but <laughs> now they're already down by two. Barry with a second loft in it over. What is this? Barry pops one up. It's kind of a fake. And Joey Dubs, well, he has to, oh my goodness, he has to respect the shot. And he gets lobbed like a soccer goalie. That shot is so perfect. It leaves his car and it's over the crossbar, but it has so little power on it, it's able to go under it just at the time as it, as it was going to go in. My goodness, what accuracy on that shot. That is incredible. That is amazing. Good way to bait in a defender and right now that's really all RIT is doing is they're getting baited into a lot of challenges and they're struggling to be able to counter out this is the best opportunity i've seen but even then d hacks i mean who else for uh cincinnati kind of at the center of a lot of these plays is able to turn it away and this time eight con getting somewhat close to a challenge but not ultimately able to put it away is we have to go back to the drawing board again from midfield as d hacks will Tap another one, Barry. Can they get a hat trick within the first two minutes? Not able to reach that one. Long clear down by Icon is going to be another one for Cincinnati to march right back. So the possession not quite there for RIT, but kind of hard to think about possession when you can barely touch the ball. Cincinnati just getting on absolutely everything in the midfield. RIT have only scored once, and it was off of a um, off of a, a mistake from from Cincinnati that they created. Right? They forced that error, and the only error Cincinnati has made, you saw about a minute ago, right? They abs uh, they double committed on the ball and uh, on defense, and the ball was just there in the crease, and no one was able to put it in for RIT. That was the only mistake made by Cincinnati so far. And if you're RIT, you need to score on these because Cincinnati are just running away with it, and it's and it shows that you can't force these errors way, uh, that often. You need to create them more often, or you just need to find a way to get past these guys. And so Ooh. far, they've only done so twice. But a beautiful pass from RIT gives them some light. Joey Dubs just tapping it. I didn't think across the goal, but ACOM was ready, so I'd have to think that was in the comms, in the game plan. And right before halftime, RIT has cut the lead in half. Cincinnati's still in control of this game, but I have to say, RIT, making them work for it, making them maybe second guess things as they show that they still have life in them. It's not just going to be that kind of direct play like they saw in game number two. In fact, it's going to be more and more passing this time, Joey Dubs. He finds it and there you go. That's the RIT we all know and love. That's two goals in about 15 seconds there. And it's found for RIT. RIT did not score a goal in regulation for the first 12 minutes and 15 seconds of this match, right? This whole series, they found one in overtime in game one, but that was a 0-0 game. I, I, it's it's a win for them, but it, it, it felt like it shouldn't be, especially with the way that Cincinnati are playing right now. RIT though, popping up and they're doing what we know that they can do. It just seemed like they forgot where the gas pedal was for a second there. Yeah, but now they're getting back to, I think, what you need to play like an effective team Rocket League is getting in passes, getting in annoying touches and making sure you're not just giving the ball away. I felt like game two was just 
them getting punched in the face by Cincinnati, and every time Cincinnati kind of encroaching them on offense, RT was kind of just throwing the ball down, not much purpose, and it was difficult for them to get any offense. Meanwhile, this game, I feel like RT is getting a lot of quality touches, and as long as the defense can hold, I think that they have a good shot at being able to get a second win, but at that point, the big question, really, the key phrase there is holding off Cincinnati, and it's not easy because they keep getting opportunities like that. They won't take that one, but indicative of uh, really, you can't really give them much space because they're certainly going to try to slap one in a dangerous position. And Sever, he's going to have a very awkward time of this, and eventually he is stopped. That is a few cut rotations, but the players actually stayed, and so they actually calmed that out. That is a Incredible that you can quote unquote ruin rotations but calm it out because normally when someone cuts rotations like that right you're you're not able to calm it out properly right someone will still go because they feel like it's their turn right of course mm -hmm. when when rocket league rotations they just flow but when you're able to calm at this level if you're uh the university of cincinnati if you can calm a cut rotation like that to perfection and make it feel so fluid like as if it was an actual rotation, you're in business. As that ball is going to find its way in, in business they are indeed. I don't know how that looks in director cam, but I can see the indecision coming in from fly cam as both Sepward and Joey Dubs were just looking at the ball, waiting for someone else to go for it. And unfortunately, the only one to go for it was the good folks over at Cincinnati. D-Hacks putting one in. And now with under 30 seconds, they might have just stolen this away under the noses of RIT, but anything can happen in these final seconds. So we're gonna have to just see really what this the rest of this game entails as another ball is just lofted untouched across the middle, but this one will result in a nice clear down. Sebward can't get to this one. Joey Dubs beats him over the top. Not an ideal touch though. It'll go to the corner. Zero seconds left, Sebward straight up, Aitkan. They'll be able to get another touch, but no one on RIT on this one. They'll send it into the midfield. It'll hit the ground, and Cincinnati now on match point here against the RIT Tigers. That is amazing. That is very well made indeed. Cincinnati just playing very well. RIT, they're a good team. We know they are, right? We, we've mm -hmm. seen the play before. Letting only five goals in in three games is amazing, right? That's normally what they do, but you're used to them scoring, right? RIT is mm -hmm. a very explosive offensive team. They aren't really known for their defense, and RIT can't play defense. Cincinnati are forcing them on defense a lot, and they can't really show their offense anymore. It's gone. They're in defense mode, right? They're they're like that Yu-Gi-Oh card that's perpetually in defense mode because if it goes <laughs> in attack mode then its attack is still going to be lower than that of uh of the monster on the other side of the field right so if it stays on defense it might not die because its defense is kind of equal but its offense is just a bit weaker right now you reach deep into my mind to touch on that bit of nostalgia <laughs> for me uh just like really since that is reaching deep into the mind of rit but Instead, really, the only thing they're grasping, kind of activating in the brain, is kind of just terror right now. RIT struggling to come up with answers, and their time is starting to run out. So right now, they have to buckle down, pull together, and see if they can answer back and force a game at number five. And this is a good way to start it off as Joey Dubs comes up, and yet again, RIT has an opportunity, but they just don't quite get the contact they're hoping for. D-Hax, though, he will get the contact he's hoping for. Demo in the bump to open up the mid lane. What is this play here? Demo and then bump. He got, both guys got sent to Narnia. And they are gone out of the play. Net is as wide open as a hippopotamus's mouth when it's hungry. Oh, my goodness. DX clearly hitting the gym as he's just benching the RIT backline, just putting them out of the way and open up so much. Another demo this time, though, Joey Dubs will survive to tell the tale and get that ball out. And that will be another save. But Cincinnati coming for blood here. They're looking to close things out here. Good passing play working out from the squad. And now RIT is trying to counter with a neat little passing play here. Joey Dubs to the back post. Akon, they can't get that one. Sebward on the follow. D-Hacks a save. 
Joey dubs with a flick in Cincinnati, saying no to all of it, all deflected away. And this time, Joey dubs an Akon, a miscommunication and a punish off of a brutal mistake. Where does this come from? Where are the rotations here? They're triple committed on offense. Who is that on the right side? Who went to get boost? Who, who wanted to steal the boost instead of letting his teammates rota uh, rotate out while staying in the midfield? That is such an egregious mistake by our IT. You normally don't see that. And Not someone, but them. they might get something back and they will separate off the backboard, so. Making up for kind of clunky rotations by the team, they are able to immediately show that Cincinnati, you gotta make sure you get back too, even if higher level play is filled with kind of these clever little passes. Sometimes just a really deep ball down the field is just enough that you need. I mean, you need to throw a curveball here and there. They haven't done that all too often this series. And so RIT are gonna be able to find uh, the back wall there. The, it hasn't been protected all that much because RIT have not utilized that back wall. And finally, they do utilize it and it surprises and catches UC off guard. And that is exactly what they wanted. That's how they find one. But they need to find two more. Joey Dubs and Akon actually both committing to this one. Now Barry trying to headhunt Sebward, the last player back. They don't get contact and Akon will be able to recover and save that to the corner, but RT gotta be careful. They committed two players that last attack and almost got burnt on the back end. So definitely something that they're not really unwilling to commit players forward still, but they have to be careful that they're not going too far up again. Another two on one. Joey Dubs gets bumped, but Akon able to send that one to the corner temporarily. So Cincinnati very comfortable transitioning out of defense, but so far still hold only their two goals. Akon turned into no con as he uh, got absolutely destroyed there, trying to rotate out and uh, miss the rotation. That is a beautiful passing play as no one's in the net. Sep word has been the score for this RIT team that has really put it away here. Joey Dubs could have scored it there, but just puts it wide. Sep word has been so clutch. And it's a good finish there as Joey Dubs. And it's good rotation too from Sep word, not just fully trusting that his teammates is going to put that away. He stays near the ball. It goes a little bit wide and Sebward's able to put it away. And maybe not with the strongest finish, but they all count the same at the end of the day. So RIT will be able to tie this one up and be looking for more again to face or really uh, force rather that game number five. Cincinnati looking strong still, but certainly RIT showing that if they can pull it together and play a little bit more cohesively, they're more than capable of staying in ga these games. That is very true indeed. And with 105 seconds left on the clock here, we have plenty of time for this to be unfolded, taken away. Is this going to be a tough one? I don't know who to vote for here because Cincinnati have been playing so great, but RIT, when they have the opportunity, they won't squander it. And but, oh, Akon, are you jumping a pass there? So. Certainly creative there. I don't know if that's their avenue back in this series, but it's certainly worth a shot. Speaking of what an angle by DHEX. So I wanted to say, but I wanted to, uh, to, to leave it to you. What an angle here. And it just finds the far post. Oh my goodness. And with, with that done, I think I, I wanted to say this earlier. Cincinnati just looking a bit like the better team. RIT have been scoring when they've been given opportunities, correct? But Cincinnati have created their opportunities, right? They've absolutely decimated the rotations of RIT when they found a goal. And they've bamboozled, they've misled, they've created their opportunities. And RIT have not. That That is the biggest difference right now, and that's why I'm saying Cincinnati are poised to win this series. I think we just saw kind of an element of RIT's play that kind of reared its head again, is just not taking opportunities when they present themselves. Another good opportunity, but Barry gets a dunk, but it's still not enough. Akon putting away. I was just about to say they're struggling. They kind of just throw the ball downfield when they have an opportunity, but this one, the odd man rush does work out. Akon coming from the back, able to put in a third 
trying to bring this game back in their control because again this is their last life they need to force this game five otherwise series ends next time cincinnati goes ahead yeah exactly and this is the most uh, scoring we've seen in the game so far right last game was a 3-2 game which technically was still a very high scoring game as this is an amazing passing play somehow rotating out he's able to pass the ball towards the inside and that's a that's a big mistake and that's going to be kept in the zone. Can Joey Dubs find the shot? No, he can't. And that's going to be on the in the air. Can Sebward find it? He's going to keep it popped up in the air. That's double committed on, but it hits the floor. No one is going to help, uh, help Sebward there. I think overtime is the only way to go either to game five or to end this series. That's a double commit. And that's not the cleanest touch. Joey Dubs over the bar, but Sebward committed with him. It's a sitter in front, D-Hack with a save away. RIT looking revitalized, but can they keep it going to be able to actually get a goal? Pressure doesn't mean anything if you don't get anything resulting from it. And they're gonna have to wait at least another kind of round to go forward as they give it away. Sepward called the action, but the save to the corner will keep them safe for now. With that net being as wide open as it was, that was a big bluff to throw there that the ball, shooting the ball into the low, uh, low close side corner when the entirety of the net was open and Sebward was on the close side post. Oh no, that is, that is not the read. And Sebward, who needed to pray for that ball to hit him, didn't need to because the, the ball was shot right at him. And the ball is now in the offensive zone. Sebward shoots too high. The net is wide open once again. And it can't find the back of the net here. Cincinnati brings it back the other way. Cleared into the corner. It's good control play here. And now Aitkan trying to work it out. High lob, Joey Dubs. Good clear to the sideline. But Sebward left alone for a little bit. Ball in the middle. Aitkan upfield. Ezio will tap that to the side here. And RIT trying to work some passing and plays out. But it's getting slowed down temporarily. Joey Dubs is just going to have to try and slow things down for RIT. Or make something of their own. But... No touch going in. Almost two minutes into overtime here. And I'd like to say we're no closer to getting a goal, but it seems like every time either of these teams goes forward, it's a fairly decent opportunity. Very close game and kind of this type of game we were promised by that game number one. And it really might just come down to one crucial mistake or one fantastic play. Let's see if Barry has what it takes. d -Hacks is there, but Akon cuts it out again. That is a great save. And I just wanted to say that uh, Cincinnati on its defense has been scrambling ever since RIT brought a new game plan into motion here and well they've been out of position they've been forced out of position what did I say that RIT weren't doing they weren't creating their own offensive opportunities guess what they're doing now they're creating their own offensive opportunities and it's absolutely throwing off uh, UC and it's putting them into uh, situations that they don't want to be in what a shot there Akon, that is beautiful placement. And RIT bring this to game five. And sometimes you don't need a banger to go past the defense. You just need to make them panic. The defender Barry coming in and might be, go down as an own goal in some books, but it's going to count for RIT. And that will push this series on to game number five, QDC. I mean, what a play by RIT. And I have to agree with you there. This felt like RIT was generating opportunities. And how can you not say that when Sebward has nine shots at this high level, nine shots in a game like this? I mean, RIT was just peppering the Cincinnati goal. They're not on, uh, uh, up against a lower uh, tier team, right? Yes, Cincinnati are 23rd, right? Technically, but hey, listen, <laughs> it's, it's technically, right? They only have one game under their belt and it's a win. And it must have been a lot more convincing because what we're seeing out of this, this is a top team going toe to toe with a team that's just come in, right? It's the new guy on the block. RIT are looking at them like uh, they won last time, but will they really win against us, right? Let's show them what they're what we're made of. And Cincinnati are just coming in and just taking their lunch buddy, right? And trying to fight back as RIT here. Can they win their final stand? Because both of them now are at fisticuffs. You, uh, uh, <laughs> the University of Cincinnati, start uh, starts off strong every game so far, but it's the mid game where it really matters, and the end game where RIT 
come out on top. And a fresh game. Scoreline is wiped. And at this point, it's really just the next winner will take it all. So seeing if RIT has it in them to maybe make something new what on this series. A fantastic save coming in from Ezio. And that one will be hit to the corner. Cincinnati on the back foot off the start, but maybe on their way back. Sepward make a save, but D-Hack will not be denied. That is a, oh my goodness. What a play here. Passing it back and forth, Sebward did all he could. There is nothing more you can ask out of Sebward on that play. He was left to dry there, his teammate going for boost, right? Expected to, uh, that, that shot to just go off the back wall, right? That's that's what you expect. It's, it's, a, it's like a, a spike in volleyball just on the first shot. You don't expect that. Just like Akon coming out of nowhere here. Where did he come from? But it comes from exactly where he needs to. The correct position rotating up to take advantage. Sepward with the air dribble just forces enough of an awkward touch from Cincinnati and enough panic in the minds of the Bearcats to be able to yield kind of this weak touch that Akon, a good player, always has that poacher sense, be able to tap that ball into the open net. So good job by RIT to tie things up here in Cincinnati. They've let this series kind of slip. I'm sure this kind of reinvigorated RIT squad is definitely not doing anything for their mental health right now. No, whatsoever. This this game is so tight. I can't honestly tell you who who would win this because both teams right now have had their shaky times. They've had their amazing times. They've had everything go their way, and then they've had nothing go their way. RIT just been the Woo. most. Oh my goodness, when they're on, they've been more on than Cincinnati were when they were at their peak, right? But when they were at their low RIT, yeah, they just couldn't generate anything in the first three games there. So the fact that they were lucky enough not to get swept here says a lot. And the fact that they've been able to stay in the series and now have a lead, well, it just shows resilience. They're going to have to try to hold it as well as Cincinnati has shown that they're never one to be counted out. Another ball off the backboard. Sebward gets it as Akon didn't have the touch. Joey dubs on the flick, but it's going to go just a little bit outside. Zaycon tries to counter back with Sebward. The deflection off the backboard. Joey dubs has to get there, but D-Hacks is quicker, and that's going to be a second. Change that D to a speed because, oh my goodness, look at how fast he is. And... Joey Dubs just hesitates that little bit. You see him stop before jumping to read where the ball is going to be. D-Hacks doesn't need that and keeps his speed and is able to beat Joey Dubs to that ball, even though Joey Dubs was closer to it. It's now going into kind of these uh, almost back half as we're approaching halftime here. Both squads tied up. I think RIT had a lot of momentum in the beginning, but Cincinnati showing that they will not be kept at bay. RIT needs to make sure they button down on this defense, as it seems like at the end of the day, it's just high lob off the backboard and being followed up, or just like a nice dunk on that near post is really all it takes for them to get. Whereas RIT, I feel like you mentioned they've made their own opportunities, but it's always seemingly taking those very creative passing plays. So. Uh, I think RIT needs to make Cincinnati work as hard as Cincinnati's making RIT work for their goals. How do you beat a team uh, like Cincinnati, who is hyper aggressive on offense, hyper aggressive on rotations on defense, and it's by beating them in the midfield. Their biggest weakness for uh, for Cincinnati here has been the midfield. When they've been caught off guard, look at this. The ball was stolen in the midfield. And now suddenly they don't know exactly how to position themselves. If you're RIT, I think this is how they figured out how to score against Cincinnati here. Their biggest weakness is the midfield. It's not the offense, it's not the defense. And RIT figured that one out in late game three. They couldn't capitalize and turn it into a win. They turned it into a win game four. But now they need to, to figure out how to stop the, the bleeding, right? They can't let in another goal while also forcing this ball into the midfield so that UC just don't know how to react to it. Certainly not. They're gonna have to make sure D-Hacks remains quiet as passes goals. He's been still forcing a lot of shenanigans in the offensive half and 
Definitely making RIT a little bit nervous down the stretch here as the rotations get really wide here for RIT, but ultimately it's a giveaway. Open air dribble. Joy Dubs sets up the flip reset. They don't get it. They do not need it. One minute remaining and RIT is put up by one. This bounce. Look at this. In the midfield again, and Akon is going to demo the player. And D Hacks just does not read this ball properly. He has to turn too aggressively. The ball is just at the perfect angle. There is no other words to describe that. Just pixels, pixels to the right, and that doesn't go in. Now Barry trying to work it out. They lose the ball though. It's a dunk. Sebward is sending it deep off the backboard. No one followed from RIT. It doesn't matter. Cincinnati's taking no chances and they'll send two to be able to get on this one. And Icon dunks it. I didn't think it was going to find it, but it will find the top corner. The mistake in the backfield and a two goal lead for RIT. Look at this. I mean, you can't see it in the replay, but this looked to be like a, like a hockey play, you know? Like you're pulling the goalie with 30 seconds left, right? You're down by one goal. You're trying to bring the offense here, right? If you can't score on the offense, then w w what's uh, the difference if you leave a guy on defense, right? Just try and go all out on the offense. And they just pushed too early together. They did not wait until they hit the offensive zone. And they got burned. And that will be the dagger, I think. How can you and come now, back from that? It's tough, especially because RIT knows it. They're just burning time with the pass back. And now it's really just a matter of running down that clock. And they've done a good job of it. RIT, they came through a lot of struggles. But ultimately, even with that goal floating in, they're going to take the dub here. A great comeback. And hats off to Cincinnati, though. A fantastic series to take the distance. Oh, my goodness. How many... 2 nothing. Every game was a one-goal game, except for game two, which was a two-goal game. It's, it's really, is... like, as close as it can be. I mean, this like, what you're saying, like, these two teams, I mean, Cincinnati, it's, it's tough because when teams come in from the split, you know, they don't have the record to be able to directly compare. But I would agree that you made a point earlier. If Cincinnati come in when they were, were I really think that this would be one of those matchups where it's, like, third place, fourth place, like, right next to each other. Definitely two top 10 teams by far, right? And there were only, I do believe, six teams that only had one loss after the uh, the the fall split, right? And if Cincinnati were playing, maybe they'd have one or two, right? If they played RIT earlier on in the season, maybe this game plays out differently, right? But Cincinnati looking strong, I expect them to win every game from, from now on for the rest of the season here. Even if they go up against higher up teams like, um, I forget who's on top of RIT actually, because RIT, I do believe, are on top of the standings now, aren't they? With this win, I, I they're definitely getting moved up. And speaking of who's ahead of them, we actually are going to be ending the night with those two teams. It's going to be University of Delaware and UT Arlington. But before we That's get right, there, right. we have to kind of whet the appetite with one more match. So we're going to throw everybody to a brief intermission. We'll be seeing a Butler and Hofstra coming up next uh, on here on EGF Rocket League.
Welcome back. Sorry for the delay, everybody. We uh, actually got into some shenanigans there. Uh, apparently, one of our squads was stuck playing in a ranked game until their match time. So, fortunately, they are out of that game. We have them. It is Butler versus Hofstra for our uh, almost final game on the matchup uh, list here. But we're just going to throw you guys right into this matchup because they're rearing to play. And I know chat's been waiting for a while. So, why make them wait, Quantum? Uh, indeed, why make them wait? Why why make everyone wait that extra five minutes when you could have just thrown the game since you were losing anyway? Okay, oh, just goodness. because they had a scheduled match and they knew and they started it right at the scheduled time doesn't mean we can blame them. But they're finally in the game. That's all that really matters. And we're going to see who comes out on top here as both squads actually fairly respectable in the standings, uh, all things considered. So... Regardless of our temporary feelings in this current mood state that we're finding ourselves in, uh, should be a fairly nice matchup. Uh, has a lot to live up to, though, historically. We've had some really good matchups throughout tonight, um, especially with uh, the most recent one, Cincinnati uh, edging, uh, and RIT just edging out each other. If uh, if the Rocket League gods know any uh, pun divine punishment is to come, you, you know this is a 3 0, right? <laughs> Karma is going to hit the fan here, and we're going to see a 3-0. We'll have to see, uh, really, if uh, the gods really do listen or stars blindly run in the Rocket League mythos, but we'll see if anything really does come out as both teams kind of just throwing the ball around, seeing uh, what sticks so far as well, there's going to try another clear out, but Magic with the cutout and the air dribble. Do they have a double? They do not. Ark has the follow, though. Kai saved the side. Happy Camper's just going to retreat back a little bit and Hold this ball up. Another touch actually might spell a little bit of trouble, but flexion will be able to be gotten away with. And both teams uh, keeping their cards close to the chest here, uh, not showing too much, but at least both teams starting to kind of open up to each other a little bit. Happy camper trying to put that towards the front. Now, uh, both teams really feeling each other out. We haven't really seen this all night where there, we've had a feeler game. This time we're having a feeler game here. And now they're just trying to, to see what they could push with here. Up until we're going to see the first goal. Then we're going to see both teams really go all out here and show what they can do. Uh, maybe not uh, show their entire hand, but show most of it anyway. At least four out of the five cards. Okay, and now Kai's going to have to try to build something out of this one, but Ark will be able to slap that one away. So Aaron... Tapping that around. Happy Camper just going to hit it to the corner, but it's going to be another giveaway. Kai up for that one on the back post, and they'll put one away. Butler on the scoreboard first. Butler on the scoreboard first. Halfway through this game, just just, just about, right? And uh, Kai is going to find that nice back wall pass, and nothing Ark can do there. He's uh, pushed way up against the, the close post and had to rotate back, and no way he was able to make that save. So now it's Austra trying to improvise a little bit. They've had some success on stream in previous games, but they're really not finding it here as a second goal gums in. Big A putting that one away, and it's just no one there on the defense. That is quite the goal there. Finds it off of the ceiling. And once again, Hofstra just seem a little bit scrambled. They don't seem to be in proper, proper position because of that. Uh, Butler is able to find that ball first when really it should be a ball that Hofstra can find first. Kai with a great pass in the middle. Sir Aaron is there and they're going to bury a third Hofstra when it rains it pours and they are stuck without an umbrella. They have no answer so far. And Butler finds the back of the net and Big Ehi is, uh, is a sub in, right? Because Astru's I do believe is their normal player and uh, currently apparently has COVID. So uh, big sad for them, right? And hope you get better well and you get well soon, right? But uh, so far your team's just looking pretty good. So I, I I wouldn't exactly be worried. I mean, they they absolutely threw off their opponents by making them wait 20 minutes. But other than, other than that, I think they... they they're showing up pretty well as as well. 
I'm just gonna assume it was just next level mind games. It wasn't it wasn't being discourteous, it was really just it's like icing, but like before anything even happens. <laughs> just making them kind of cool down a little bit and seeing what happens from there as they get a nice bump there on the backboard. Big A, no touch. Kai will tap it around. And uh, as game one goes, this is just as chaotic as I'd really expect it as well as ricocheting around and both squads trying to chase the ball down. But ultimately, it just really feels like Butler's able to keep this ball moving a lot more effectively than Hofstra's able to really clear it out and give them some space. Three goals on the board. That might make it a two-goal difference, but it's going to be put away. Arc gets demoed as well. That ends the offense. But that is such a huge mistake. And they I, cut back to two goals. That's a tough one, sir. Just trying to... This is another kind of example of a ball that it's something you can touch, but maybe necessarily shouldn't. And unfortunately... That one will be tapped right into the middle and nice uh, kind of predator instinct coming in from Hofstra being able to put that one away. Speaking of, what are these goals? Just magic tapping it in the middle and Happy Camper, just easily as you like, just walks it in. What are these processions, Siren? What are you doing? Just <laughs> right there, you need to push that. What? Respect the shot, your teammates aren't there. You need to slow it down, no. What is that play? Feels a little bamboozly. Where I mean, they'll get it right back. I mean, creating the defensive error and this time offensively gets on back. But both teams playing a little clunky on defense. Just I don't see the challenges coming in. Maybe they're waiting for something else. But passivity has a price at times. Yeah, it's it's definitely a passive game. Saren, they're putting it to the back of the net, saying sorry for the earlier play. But there's no respect for these shots whatsoever, right? The players on both teams, right? This isn't just Butler. This isn't just Hofstra. They're both just staying back in the net and waiting for the shot to come in instead of respecting the shot and trying to 50 uh, the opponent who has the ball, which is tough, right? Because that's normally what we see. And instead, we're seeing a lot of offense because of this. We see a lot of just shots on net that you just wouldn't see. Instead of the ball being stuck in the midfield, the shot is on net. That one almost gets in as it's stopped by Siren there. Beautifully played. And that's going to allow Butler to win this first game. But that is a weird game. That That is... <laughs> leaves a bitter taste in my mouth, honestly. It's not, it is a little closer than I would expect it. But it's, a, it's clunky all around, for sure. It is a very clunky game. Uh, honestly, that, I think that was the, the, the bad part about it, right? We... We saw even the lower tier games, right? Obviously, we're, I, I'm not saying that North Dakota and and their opponents that they beat earlier today, William and Mary, are are necessarily bad teams, right? But they aren't the top teams, right? They are at yep. the bottom of the standings, right? And so we expect them to make more mistakes. These guys are in the midfield charts, right? They're they're much higher than William and Mary and and North Dakota, and yet both of them. Both those uh, technically lower tier teams have shown a lot more grit, a lot more less mistakes. These are mistakes you don't see out of GCs normally. And you're it's talking about with uh, Butler, they are third in the Big East, but Hofstra third in the Eastern Conference for themselves. So within their respective conference, both formidable teams, even if the overall standings might separate them a little bit. So. Hofstra coming out with a, a nice fire there. It's nice to see them uh, start a game two, reminding that squad, hey, you might have gotten that game number one, but not necessarily the rest of them are going to be a walk in the park as Magic trying consistently to be a thorn in the side as he chases down another ball with Arc trying to combine, but Flexion's going to go fairly deep. No touch there, but Kai not there to punish. Sir Aaron there for the shot. That's going to be a great angle. It's going to be a phenomenal placement for the goal. Beautifully played, popped up off of a great pass, far down and in, and right off the crossbar too, uh, the corner crossbar I should say. So that just angles itself straight into the middle, and that is beautifully done. Beautiful placement, beautiful goal. Now everything tied up. It's really on both these teams now to try to settle in and play a little bit more stable as Magic will just lift it right over that last defender. 
And second last player, a little shook. They were not anticipating that player getting beat. And uh, Hofstra, once again, take the lead. Again, not really a, a, a respect to the shot, right? No one's really pushing up with these uh, shots. They're up in the air. And it's, it just doesn't feel like there's respect between these teams, right? Like, they're expecting to be mistakes. And when there aren't mistakes, right, they get, they get burned. Both teams are doing this, and that's that's the weird part. Normally, I would I, I wouldn't notice this, right? Maybe it's been happening all season long, and I just haven't noticed, right? But with the uh, with the great amount of games that we've had today, right? Every single game so far, every single series has been a banger, right? It's been close, and we, we've seen quite the series after series. This one just leaves a bitter taste. Ooh. I don't know. As that's it makes it a 3-1 goal, a uh, 3-1 game. Arc, that's a 3v1 for Magic there. A bad clear for Sereran. And no one in the net to defend this. It's a very classic type of punish uh, from uh, kind of something similar that we were seeing in the previous game when we were looking at RIT in Cincinnati, where you're seeing a player just kind of throw the ball away and it just gets shoved right down the defense's throats. And sometimes you just don't have the boost to bail them out. and. Right there, sir, and trying to get a flick. Instead, it rolls straight down the middle, and it's punished. And now Magic, another ball just in the middle, uncontested, and those going to get put away. So what started as kind of a lead kind of given away is now starting to become somewhat of a runaway lead for Hofstra. There's three minutes remaining, and they're showing no signs of stopping. Well, I mean, you look at that play, right? Going up in the air, that was the last man back with the ball there, right? Mm -hmm. The, the, the last thing he expected was someone to push him, and that's exactly what happened. The shot was respected, and that turned into a goal. So normally, you, you need to, to know the, that, that that shot is normally going to be respected, right? Someone's going to go up for that. That's exactly what happened there, and Hofstra take full advantage of the fact that the net is, for some reason, wide open. Kind of an awkward deflection there up until that last shot. Both teams are right, the picture of efficiency as they are all both shooting 100%, but it doesn't mean much when your one shot has only amounted to a one actual goal against a squad that's put four past you as we reach half time. It's Butler on the back foot and really not doing much to help their situation. Another ball straight down the middle. Magic lurking up for it. Big A, he's going to hit it to the side, but Happy Camper, another one lobbed back down. A little bit of temporary relief, but midfield pressure coming in real strong uh, for Hofstra. They are shutting down almost everything that has been started up. And Butler, they could have started that second half a lot better if uh, Rocket League didn't decide to Rocket League the team because Big Eki there got absolutely hit, right? He was in the net, he got hit and received no knockback for some reason. <laughs> well, that could have been a goal had the last man, had the defender been kicked out of the goal there but instead it's gonna be Kai here to find the goal so no matter what Butler will still find the back of the net here but uh, that's it's rough for them because the opportunities that they could have right are taken away from them either by themselves or the game yeah now we're entering into the interesting aspect two goals uh, game is definitely doable especially when they get shots like that kai denied off the bar by happy camper hofstra getting away with that one will they have to get away with another one a great save this time arc putting it to the side and off the woodwork so butler starting to wake up a little bit big ahey now off the bar again and right now butler really getting worked by this fourth defender of hofstra Framework of the goal coming to the rescue time and time again. And there you go. It's 4 2 right now. 70 seconds on the clock. What a save by Magic. And Hofstra are keeping themselves in the game with some great defense here. That shot is on net. That is not going to be stopped here. <laughs> that is some great pressure being put on here. But Kai, his great shot finds the top corner. And now the game has gone from doable to a very much impossibility. You have 60 seconds, you have one goal in it. And now I'm just very curious to see how Hoff's just going to deal with the rest of this game. They had quite the lead. They've managed to lose it down the stretch, but 
All they really have to do is just play patient and play decent defense and they can get their ways out of this. But Butler's certainly looking a little bit more lively down the stretches. Sir Aaron will get a fantastic dunk all the way across. Bigehi keeps it dangerous. Magic taps it down on the near post, but it's just going to be hit across the face instead of on target. And Ark will be able to clear that one out and that's going to buy him some valuable time. Shot is on the side. That could have been a two goal lead there. No one's gonna get it, so Big A, he's gonna get the clear out. Can he get the shot? No, he can't. 15 seconds left on the clock here. One goal is all that's separating both of these teams. How does that not find its way in? I don't know, but that one's getting it tonight as well. One more chance, Kai to the back post. Big A, he, they don't have the boost, and Hofstra escapes with game number two. Oh my goodness. Butler. Butler, Butler, Butler. Letting in three that, that unanswered right at that point in the mid-time, at the halfway point of the game, really burned them, I think. And uh, they tried to come back here. Hofstra just had enough in the tank to stop them because Butler did look really strong in that second half. If they were just as strong in the first two and a half minutes as they were in the second half, they could have easily won this game. I think it's another case of a team really playing well but just mistakes early on just create such a tall peak to climb that you just can't surmount it over time like you put forth all the effort you almost get there but then the clock runs out and you take a loss even though for the majority of that game you were playing fairly solid so limit those mistakes and butler is well on their way to being able to take some w's down the stretch but you can't just be giving away games like that hofstra really struggled down the stretch but they had more than enough uh, to really close that one out. Speaking of Ostra, they're on the defense right now. That's a oh, double wow. commit. And it's not going to be... Oh, wow, what a save by Big A. Will it be all for naught, though? He's in the net again. It's way wide. Wide by a mile. And he's able to rotate back out without much issue. That is such a good play. And it turns into a goal. And really nice finish there by Sir Aaron. They actually got a kind of a clunky flip at that one, but they got the angles right, and that's really all that matters. Back post just too far for that defender. And an opening goal to go along with it will go a long way. That is, unless they give something off the kickoff, Kai. Great speed to that ball will ricochet that off of the backboard. And now Magic is going to have to play a little bit passive on this one as they misread it, and it's going to have to go all the way back to the Hofstra corner for them to try to rebuild as they're just letting another ball come through but this time sir aaron will get rewarded i said that the Hofstra were, were finally starting to respect shots but there there was no pressure on that ball that shot the net was completely wide open so no wonder the scoring's been high right because a lot of a lot of the time you, you see high scoring if there's no pressure right and right now there's no pressure on this ball when when someone has ball possession there's no pressure on it you see, they're they're just leaving it. They're waiting for something. I don't know what they're waiting for exactly, and it's messing with me, I think. It definitely is messing with me. I think part of it might just be the nerves of understanding that you are playing on stream, you are being critiqued to a certain extent, but on top of that, you're playing against a team that has punished you a lot, and I think you are starting to see these teams take a little bit less risks, maybe play a little bit... I mean, we've been saying clunky, but just like kind of irregular. I don't know if they'd really be playing this indirect, but I know it's certainly not, I'm sure, satisfying for either of these teams as they've been getting up some interesting opportunities to each other. But we'll have to see if really those nerves start to calm. And hopefully it does soon because for whoever wins this next game, they could be a match point and mistakes like that just come out. Tie game off Happy Camper. Big, big mistake here. The net's completely wide open. Who's that? That is, oh wow, that is Kai going for boost over ball. Not something that you normally see. He should have been the one into the going into the net. Instead, he went for the big boost pad. And you get paid, you get burnt for, for that when that happens. But Kai says, sorry, let me make it up. And right off the bat, right there, it's back to a one goal uh, game and a one goal lead for Butler.
the Gehi, just a large human, just getting that 50 and then just getting the immediate rest of their boost to get a second 50 to deflect for that pass. So very well done by the Butler player and now marching on to a lead. Big Gehi almost gets another touch. It made magic miss. So going to cause a little uncertainty in the back, but Ark ultimately will be able to get that clear and another couple touches to slow it down. But Officer now trying to fight from behind as we have crossed half time and both teams uh, now even on the series this is for the go-ahead game and i'm glad to see these teams even though butler has been fairly strong pretty throughout all these games it's nice to see that hofstra's starting to bring it a little bit more even i feel like they are starting to trade a little bit more punches and at least they're getting rewarded more for quality passes arc with a second and there you go we're back to a 2-2 game here arc uh, a little bit more invisible on uh, in these games so far. Not meaning that he's been doing bad, but he hasn't been the big player getting the goals. He hasn't really been the player uh, getting the saves, right? He's been the one getting the ball cleared out of the zone and been the one setting up the goals. And so Ark uh, just having a little bit of camo on his car has uh, made this game uh, just opened up this game. And a nice clear from Happy Camper will be able to clear out the defense just for a little bit, give him some breathing room. Hit from Ark does not help though, as Kai going for the double tap. Magic saves it for now, but gonna have to call in some help as Happy Camper will clear their lines yet again. 90 seconds for Butler to try and inch their lead back, and same for Hofstra for trying to take a lead in this game and maybe try to regain some footing a tad as Butler is. I would say been overall the stronger team, the more dangerous team, but I feel as though Hofstra isn't necessarily forcing bad play out of Butler. It's more so that they're really putting them on their toes and making them accountable for missing these saves. Magic puts in three for the lead. There you go. You're talking about how Hofstra have just been... I, I feel like they've been making less mistakes overall. Butler is a better team, but also the more inconsistent team, right? The one who's made... Uh, the most mistakes and because of that it's allowed Hofstra to stay in this game and it's because of goals like that right and those goals are are not a rarity right now uh, for for Butler to let in but Kai once again answers right away and that's that's been the good part about Butler is that they've been able, able to answer right back and it's definitely the brutal part of Hofstra is that you fight so hard get these leads and then it's just one minor slip up you just give the ball off the sidewall instead of trying to control it and it just punished immediately for Butler. So Butler showing off that clinical finishing when the opportunities present itself and officer trying to like claw, scratch, bite their way into a lead or getting these goals or maybe just gift wrapped. But Kai, instead of giving that open net away, will be able to get that save off. And on the counter, Sir Aaron puts it off the bar and they're gonna have to make off to stretch for this one. But Kai at least keeps it interesting off the corner again. Pass in the middle. Actually, Sir Aaron's there. How is that not a clear 4-3 Butler? And that is, what is this? That's a backflip there. That's a miss there. That's a miss there. A triple miss that allows Saren to get the back of the net. Oh my goodness. What a goal. I really thought that was going to be a little bit near, but good job from the Butler the third player getting on that ball, recognizing it was still going to be in a dangerous position and defenders might hesitate as shows that he was correct in that assumption. So 15 seconds remaining. Game has really been stolen away from Hofstra, but still time for them to play spoiler on this game. And now with a long ball down, Big A slows it down for Happy Camper, but a good touch past Arc. Trying to pick it back around. They're gonna have to have a full court carry. Kai says no. And Butler will be pushed on to match point. Butler just pushing past Hofstra there to force that ball onto the floor. We get ourselves a fourth game here with Butler on top two to one. I The shots from Butler coming through. I mean, they just hit 12 in that last game compared to the six from Hofstra. So doubling their shot total and I wouldn't say that's an undeserved. Sometimes you see shot totals and they don't really reflect who I would say is really dominant. Like in earlier series, like we casted this uh, evening, we had games where there was a really high shot total, but I wasn't saying they were really quality mm -hmm. shots. But on this one, I felt like every time Butler was marching forward, I really couldn't count them out for being able to be able to score. I feel like Hofstra took chances when they were available, but for the most part, Butler was just hammering the net and almost every single time Hofstra really had to stretch to make those saves.
Yeah, because those were really quality passes made towards the front of the net, right? And there were a lot of really quality opportunities that were missed. There were a lot of quality opportunities created, right? These weren't just mistakes made by Hofstra. These were opportunities created by Butler. And Butler really was able to make some space for themselves. And this win uh, is well-deserved for them because they were, as you said, the better team on the pitch. So now going into that game number four, we're going to have to see if Butler can truly close this one out or if Hofstra is going to be able to pull their sleeves and kind of play defense a little bit cleaner to shut out this squad and see if we have a game five maybe in the cards. But we're going to have to really find a way to just slow down uh, this blue side because it feels like at a certain point, it just Butler's just playing with their food. And if Hofstra doesn't get kind of those gifted goals down the stretch, it might get a little ugly. It might get a little bit ugly, but the series has been quote unquote ugly, right? Really back and forth fighting uh, for for supremacy, really. And I mean, but Butler has been the superior team so far, but Hofstra nipping at their heels. Certainly so, and it's it's really just how they can open up the defense here if they can get those passes off. That's where they found, I would say, the most success that's really made Butler sweat is putting these dangerous balls across. No one there for Hofstra on that one, but two players from Butler committed. Happy Camper over the top, but Kai, unperturbed, will be able to tap that one down the line. And now the one-on-one, -on -one, Ark called into action. Big A, he tapped away, and now Hofstra has a chance to counter down. Pass in the middle, nobody. Happy Camper tapped down to the goal line, but turned away. So a little bit of ping pong happening around this field as the ball just ricochets between both teams. And uh, both teams are trying to find possession, but it seems like none won it. Sir Aaron finds the back of the net there. That is beautifully done. Great pass by Kai. Crossbar off the post here. Oh, that was going to go wide. Ark puts it in. Ooh. That's some of the risks you have to take. Yeah, it's some of the risks you have to take when you have those reads. You have to jump at it. Hopefully you can get there in time. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens. You get there a little too late and you're actually the person who is gonna finish off an opportunity, but you can't rest on really those disappointments. You have to be able to come back and so I've got three minutes to do so, but Hofstra definitely not making it easier on themselves with that deflection as they're trying to get some pass there turned away. Arc another deflection out, but Big Ahi ultimately yet another clear all the way down to the orange corner. So far, just Hofstra are playing catch up, it feels right. They, they're they trying to find opportunities and Butler are, are slamming the door shut on them right now uh, in, in that front and Butler doing pretty well. As Big Ahi gets demoed, he'll be respawned there and he'll respawn on the right side, but Happy Camper, the shot right down, Kai, with the save. Half the game left. Right now, Hofstra just stronger uh, when it comes to when they have the ball opportunities here, but Butler just closing the opportunities when they come. Now clapped across. Happy Camper will be able to hit that one deep downfield as this ball ricochets into the middle. Kai called into question. Another high lob all the way across the goal. Saren called into really action, but ultimately all of Hofstra retreated very deep on that and they're gonna have to march their way back upfield. Happy Camper, another lob, but it's just going to go wide again. Just really Hofstra throwing the ball on target, but I can't really say anything is causing Butler to have to actually do anything with the ball. It's really just being thrown onto the backboard and cleared away. So far, though, is so good for Butler. But Hofstra have shown that they are deadly enough that if Butler gives them an inch, they will take the entire mile. Now we're going to have to see if in the next 90 seconds something can come of this pressure. Magic getting a little too close. They're going to have to retreat. Big Ahi has Kai up in support. The deflection across. Magic has to get a 50 instead. Sappy Camper advances it down the sideline. Ark, a little bit of a dribble, tries to put it into space. Big Ahi on the chase, and another deflection for Hofstra. It's just going to have to work as a back pass, but all these touches are just burning off time. They need to get this ball upfield and generate some kind of scoring chance, lest Butler 
able to be able to continue that pressure another shot but gonna be deflected near post and another possession play here from butler and butler are just bring the ball back into their zone keeping possession of it and they, they haven't lost it they've been playing so much better in this fourth game here compared to the, especially the first uh game and the, the, the first two games were were not definitely not as strong they showed up here in this game in this game four they've only scored one goal but their defense was so impressive here they completely deserve this win now good communication from kai and sir aaron as they leave it but sir aaron doesn't get the touch he's hoping for but doesn't really matter as long as they can keep the pressure up 10 seconds remaining they need to hold on to this lead will they build on it it will go to the corner instead kai High deflection, and now Hofstra in the position to need a full court carry, which they will not receive. Butler will close things out 3-1 after some stiff competition from Hofstra. Stiff competition indeed, right? One goal game once again, right? These last two games could have gone either way. Butler just come out with the victory here. It's, it's a clean result from them. I'm, I, it, it's the, as we said, they're the better team. I wouldn't necessarily say because they're necessarily dominating this matchup, but ultimately they're getting the wins out of these games. And you can't say that they're not putting on sufficient pressure, getting ball off the framework, make, putting the Hofstra in awkward positions. And I think promising plays uh, coming through from Hofstra, but ultimately one team is higher up in the standings for a reason. I think they showed off, showed it off here. Definitely Hofstra gave them a good run for their money, but Butler they really got their act together. I think I was a little too pessimistic at the beginning. <laughs> Maybe I was a little bit bad. wonder why. But, uh, hey, listen, Butler deserved this win here. And uh, they worked hard for it, and they got it. And that's that's how this series ends. Hofstra still getting that one win. They might be happy with it. But uh, we're going to go to a break here, and we're going to go to our next series. Let's see if the hype for UT Arlington versus Delaware is what it's hyped up to be. I could stay like this forever following you Just don't get too far and I'll be right where you are
Welcome back, everybody. We got our final match of the night. We got UD against UT Arlington. Two top teams this entire league, and these guys are just ready to go. They just joined immediately. They didn't even wait. So, you know, we have the starting gun, and they're just like, nah, I don't need it. And so we're just going to throw you guys right into this match and uh, see how it goes. You know, they started off before the... the it's like a sprint race, right? Like uh, the the 100 meter dash. They didn't wait for the pistol to go off. They just went <laughs> off. There you and go. I'm I'm, hope I'm hoping they they're continuing to go off because these are the two top teams in this league, and they are our premier end of the night show match here. So, gonna have to see how it really the hype can really be built up even more. But I'm sure these guys are be more than enough to be able to fill that as Vixa going up fast for that one. A great save by Nava. Rain's going to hold this one up as adverse. Tries for a flick. No dice. Nava comes up. Open pass. They'll find Samba and they're going to bury that one in the far post. There you go. UTA starting off strong. And there you go. You know UTA aren't always going to be strong, but Delaware, I'm sure they're going to come back here with an answer. So a rough start there for UD, but they will be able to have uh, plenty of time there. Uh, if you're going to get scored on, I'm sure that you prefer getting scored on early. So you have some time for a rebuttal, but UT Arlington maybe not in the giving mood as they continue trying to find these short little passes here. UT Arlington, always a team so dangerous with just kind of tiny possession plays, really makes you doubt yourself as a defense, I'm sure, but I'm sure they're into making UT Arlington doubt himself a little bit. That's our first shot of the game, but just going to find its way over the bar instead. The ball is still in the midfield here, and we're not seeing a lot of uh, ball possession, right? We're seeing a lot of uh, balls getting cleared out there, and look at that. Adverse is going to find that with uh, a great pass from, uh, from uh, Sambala. And the clear just, there, there was no control. Right? Just gave it straight back to Adverse here. Yeah, and Vixa was just actually AFK in the goal in that last shot. I don't think he expected Adverse to get that much power on the ball. It's kind of like a uh, goalkeeper just watching the ball soar past him on a clanger of a shot. So unfortunate to see from Delaware. But UT Arlington coming out guns blazing. Great passing play so far, generating a lot of pressure and certainly so like any good team bearing chances when they present themselves. And, uh, I mean, both of these teams, I mean, they're, they're known for taking opportunities when there are, uh, when, even if there aren't any, right, they'll create their own. And so they're, they're both known for, uh, being dominant at that. That's why they're on top of the league. Now, Adverse going for something a little bit creative off the ceiling. Might have been going for a double tap, but not going to find it on that go around. Vixa challenging quickly for this one, but they will be beaten out. Samba, another great challenge. UT Arlington just getting fantastic midfield challenges right now to frustrate this University of Delaware trying to transition onto offense. And in reality, they can barely even get out of their half. But maybe a miss might open up things right now. Rain, no boost. They're just going to lob it near goal. Vixa comes in, but Samba, another save across as they'll have find some possession. But UD really... Find their way to still get some shots off, but they're still getting humbled a little bit by this UT Arlington defense as we cross half time and they've just gotten themselves a third. And that is a great one. Adverse from his own zone. That's an aerial carry. Respecting the shot, it was just missed. And no one was in the back of the net. As the third man there, I understand that you need to, to respect the shot. And that's exactly what he did. Just went a little bit too early and le left without any boost, right? He had no more boost as he, he went to challenge that. And so we have a three goal game now, almost back to a two goal game, but the ball, the ball goes wide. And now Nava trying to touch it to safety, but really nothing doing. Rain, they're lurking for it and they'll get one back. So you Delaware, they can't count them out and you can't give them an opportunities like that. Any good team to be able to bury those. Yeah, both teams are very good. UTA, though, have been known for, for absolute decimation, right? And so Delaware, knowing this, they're, they're going into this game, I'm sure, full of confidence because of how they've been playing recently. 
Yeah, edging out Arlington based simply just off of game differential, winning six more games across things. But you wouldn't know it based on this play. Nava coast to coast for the fourth. That's nice, beautiful. And another solo play. And this is absolutely throwing Delaware off. Because these goals... Oh, these are these are odd goals because aerial carries like that. Normally, you you learn how to deal with those in, in diamond, right? Because most you learn that in uh, how to how to carry a ball like that in platinum, right? And so once once your team is able to figure out how to play against that, then you will no doubt no longer need it once you hit champ and GC. At this point, right? These guys are are much higher than GC. Most of them are in SSL, right? So you don't expect those kind of plays to happen, right? You don't expect an aerial like that. And it, it just really messes with the head game. Right? It's such a new play that you don't expect it to be to, to, to even happen, right? You, you don't even expect it to, to, to be a possibility. I find that the it's the type of plays are stay the same in different ranks. It's just the complexity of them uh, down the stretch, the improvisation, those extra little touches. I play uh, throwing a wrench in the play for the defense, and they've been throwing quite a few wrenches. I don't know where they're pulling them from, but five goals here from UT Arlington, really making a statement here in game number one. And Samba's looking maybe to add a couple more on there as they go for a bump on Grau, but not gonna get that one to go. Entering that last minute, Delaware maybe just trying to get something for the road here heading into game number two because the way Arlington's playing, I, I really can't put any faith in a comeback. I mean, a comeback in this game sounds absolutely impossible, but comeback in this series, very much so possible. If UT, Ar UT Arlington here can just have a few bad bounces going into their net here, uh, or some really good passes being absolutely thrown their way, then there's going to be a, a, a lot of opportunities for Delaware here to make it a series. A great pass by Vixa showing off why they are in the position they are in. Rain jumping right on top of that one. At this point, there's nothing left to lose. Why not just throw yourself forward? So three goal margin, again, maybe a bit too far, but at least something to give them some hope, show that the passes can connect against the Arlington defense as Samba will take another one off the backboard. Can't get the Doomsie to go, but at this point, we're just wasting time anyway. Final 15 seconds ticking down. Can Delaware get something a little bit more before we go into that next game of the series? They will. Brain show Samba how it's done with the Doomsie. That is a hat trick with the Doomsie right there. That is a beautiful play, getting it by. And again, a very solid play out of these guys. Not plays that you'd normally see in Supersonic Legends, though. So it's interesting to see that uh, the game's made a full circle, right? Moves that you <laughs> rarely see in GC and even even in, to a certain extent champ, right? You you won't see it from, from C2 and onwards. You normally won't see a Doomsie. You normally won't see an aerial carry straight into a net like that, right? So the fact that it's made a full circle, right? That it's such a newbie move that people won't expect them, right? And when they are pulled off, no one expects them, so they can't stop them, is actually impressive to think about, right? It's it's really just the speed of execution. If you execute anything quick enough, it's really hard to counter. And UT Arlington doing that quite a lot. They're challenging very quickly, and they're getting the dub because of it. But heading to game number two, Warm-up game's over. This is where the series really begins. We've seen a lot of twists and turns throughout other games that we've seen throughout pretty much all the other series. But uh, this is where you start to really have to demand your respect. Delaware is number one in this league for a reason. And game number two, no better time to show why. Yeah, Ar Arlington here uh, will have a tough time of things, I think. But uh, Delaware right now are on the back foot. So UT Arlington are in the driver's seat. They, and they need to, to continue with that because if Delaware find a way back into the series, it might be over. Certainly so as Grau wins one there. Samba, not the cleanest touch. Vixa 
will touch it and be able to follow on the air dribble. No one touches that, but Vixen doesn't have the boost to follow. Growl sitting in front, gets a nice little 50 in front of net. Rain's gonna keep it interesting. Now the third man coming in from Vixa. Another good save. Arlington on the back foot now. Do they have enough boost to outlast this attack? Vixa denied. Growl finally gets one to go. And it, what seemed like seven shots later, Delaware finally breaks through. And go, oh, he finds this one, the sharpest man on the field. What a beautiful goal there. And he gives Delaware their first lead of the game. And thank you, MSU Esports, for the raid. That's very, very kind of you. You're here to witness our last game of tonight. And it's between our top two teams in the league. UT Arlington and the University of Delaware. Oh my goodness. Now we're gonna have to see how UT Arlington deals with the adversity of the unthinkable for them after that last game, falling behind to this UD squad, but Maybe that lead won't last too long. It's not an open dribble, but doesn't get the flick maybe they're hoping for. Another deflection into the corner. Gonna go high for Nava. They'll just hit a roller on target range. Just barely enough boost in the tank to turn that away. Another pressure on by Arlington. Pass down, Samba. Nice catch. Can they get the flick? They don't need it. They'll play it slow instead to the corner. And smart play by them, but I believe that boost steal is gonna end this one as that one sent down the sideline for Vixen to chase. It's on the side here, and I mean, Delaware see, don't seem fully in control just yet, but they have two goals, right? Klo has scored another one here, which is absolutely beautiful, but they they don't seem to have ball possession, right? That's that's the big thing right now. They have the goals, but UT Arlington still have the ball possession, and so it can, it can swing back into their favor. But if Delaware are able to beat them in that as well, then I think it's GG, and Delaware will win three straight here. Well, now we're up to see if Arlington has that game one juice left in them. They have plenty of time to do it as we just hit half time. And Adverse, using that speed he's known for, a fantastic waterfall down, but Samba didn't believe in the play. Turned away at the worst time, potentially, as try to make up for it, but Grau. Shuts it down. They got a double tap. They're maybe trying to add to it. Rain up and attack with them. Bumps his teammate. They get a flick, but it's off target. Adverse down the line for the clear. Vixel will send it back. Do they have a double tap on their own? It's just going to go near post and wide. And right now, this is a completely de different Delaware squad we're looking at. Yeah, Delaware just looking so much stronger. And UT Arlington get faked out by one. And then that one is up in the air. It's a good hit. Is it going to go on net? No, it's going to be wide, but Samba can't find anything there. Uh, 102 seconds on the clock left here. And uh, once again, thank you to MSU Esports. Very, very nice of you guys. Hope you enjoy your stay. Samba trying to mount his own stay in the Delaware half. He keeps going for air dribbles, but Delaware shutting them down very well. Now in the transition, a nice pass, but Rain it's a little bit too much around it. Vix is just going to have to cover that, send it over the bar. And Arlington taking a 50. It's going to go straight to the ceiling. Novel with the win. They're approaching one minute remaining. They are still two goals behind it. They're knocking on the door, really, but they haven't really been able to get through the doorway. Is really Everything's been turned away very well by Delaware so far. The defense hasn't been sweating too much. They've been cutting a lot of things out in midfield and finding passes of their own. Rain Ooh. will get a fantastic save forced out of Samba. It'll go a lot of ways to be able to enable the counter adverse. What a flick. What a save. Oh my goodness, game on the line. And somehow this goes from what should have been a three goal game. And now the least cut in half. It's a two one game, 43 seconds left to go. UTA, the opening is back open here. They might just get it, but no, Vixa puts it back to bed here. No, no life for you, he says. Kickoff goal is so crucial, and Vixa saw that pass 100% of the way down the field. March into the promised land, restoring that two-goal lead. That's got to be a morale buster for Arlington as they now have to march back downfield and try to get two more to force this one into OT. 
Delaware doesn't look like they're in the giving mood. Vixa doesn't get that dunk. Growl in the middle. Vixa's lurking. That sends two players. Samba to adverse, and he can't put it on target. A crucial miss. And now Nava and Samba combined, but those are precious seconds ticked off the clock. Precious seconds indeed. We might be talking about those precious seconds in the next minute here. Because if this ball hits the front of the net here in the crease with zero seconds left, with the ball surely going in, if not for the zero second timer, then we could say that that's the reason why. But the ball is here in Delaware's hands. It's going to be cleared out. Adverse picks it up. He's going to get a second touch, passing it to no. Intercepted by goal. It's in the corner. What can be done here? The ball's in the air. And now it's going to bounce down. Delaware escapes by the skin of their teeth, but a win is a win and a tie series is on the table here. Delaware marching back down and it, this game, admittedly, a little bit closer than it probably should have been. Delaware sending the house on one of those plays, trying to get a fourth goal, and it results in them giving up a second. Honestly, Delaware looked a lot stronger that game, and if not for their own mistakes, I think this could have been an even cleaner game out of them in this game number two. Honestly, there was no mistake on that goal. On on the <laughs> goal for for what, what are UT Arlington? Sorry, I I I just can't believe that save. Honestly, that save by was it Samba? Mm -hmm. I think it was Samba that that made that save, and. He, he leaves it for adverse who brings it in flicks it home right that just that's just a a, 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 pl a play that turns into movies you know we, we don't talk about plays like that very often but it that if that play allows arlington to win this game right that 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 is something we talk about for weeks to come 100 percent. unfortunately Gonna have to find quite the producer to change up that script because unfortunately they were not able to pull out that game and so now they're going to have to scramble for a different way to come away with these series maybe going for the freestyle approach as samba goes straight to the ceiling but no contact adverse has to race back to be able to tap this one wide the giveaway vixa has lobbed that far corner seeing if any of his compatriots can be able to chase this one down. Arlington just throwing it downfield. They're just trying to buy time, grab some boost. As right now, Delaware trying to mount a stay in their half and they're getting a fair amount of success with it. That is until the final dunk will be able to give them a little bit of space to reset rotations and get back to business on offense as Nava not able to get that final touch. Oh man, Till, still tied at zero. A minute and 15 seconds have passed. And that shot Ooh. is on and it's tantalizingly close on the goal line, but can't be found. Now Grau, long, clear, adverse, has the boost for it. A fantastic touch that might just be on target. Raid doesn't have the boost and coast to coast clear from adverse will put him on the board. Oh my God goodness oh no ut arlington taking the lead with that one that is so close to being a save trying to pitch it off of the crossbar not happening today it feels like one of those clears where you're on defense you're thinking there's no way i'm in danger if i go get boost here and then you turn on ball cam and suddenly you got a 70 mile an hour screamer coming right at your top of the shelf so Unfortunate for the University of Delaware. They do find themselves behind off of something a little bit improbable, but honestly, the way Adverse is playing all season, I wouldn't count anything out. This man could do anything on the ball on command, and Delaware just has to respect that. Delaware do have to respect them, just like Arlington is respecting uh, them back here, because both of these teams are Titans, right? And so let's, let's see what they can do, because that ball is on net, and Glow's going to find the back of the net. That is some poise there, holding on to this ball for as long as he did. Fakes out one, and then just flicks that ball. And what do you want Naya to do there? Nava to do there. I feel like Nava just has to kind of get to that ball and cut off that angle. And unfortunately, the boost was just not there. They slowed down a little bit just to maybe play a little bit predictively. But unfortunately, sometimes you just have to 
kind of get there first and then decide about angles later. Unfortunately, they will get punished for that. It will be a tied game and head into the second half of this game. All bets are off about how this one's going to work out. Vixa, great pass in the middle, but they're not able to put that one away. Samba lets them try it on themselves there. Arlington try to pass play, but it will be denied. And Adverse going to try to restart the attack, but good cutout in the midfield here. Arlington a little bit frustrated on offense, but still a very close game as we enter into the final two. Final two minutes, still tied. Cool with an amazing play, but again, his plays are as sharp as his decal because, oh my goodness, they're just clear cut and dry. They are beautifully made and served on a silver platter right for <laughs> Delaware to eat, but QT Arlington are, 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 are able to, to stop them before they're able to, uh, before the silver platters hit the table. Now it's kind of on Delaware to lick these passing plays together, but Adverse shuts that one down, chasing it down on the near post. They get a demo. Can they get the Doomsy? No, but Samba on the putback. What a save by Vixa. Nava chasing it down for a crucial touch, but Rain is still on it. No touch coming in. The demo from Samba is going to clear the way. And now Delaware's on the back foot. Adverse, no flick though. And Grout back and forth. Counter always a threat from both squads as Rain will whip all the way around and get a nice dunk, but UT Arlington is handling it well in this midfield pressure by both teams, resulting in a lot of anxiety, I'm sure, in the minds of all these players. Oh, everyone has anxiety right now, because if there, no one scores within this 45 seconds, we're going to overtime here, and it already feels like a bit of an overtime, doesn't it, at this point then? Because <laughs> you know that the, you, you can't really score on either team. Yes! Oh my goodness, Samba, what a save on Vixa. I mean, Vixa coming big earlier with that save, so I, I can't really say otherwise, right? Vixa with the double save, saving his team. And then that one by Samba on Vixa, right? Just absolutely oh. stone cold. Vixa, game on the line. The ball's wide. The ball over the bar twice and can't get put away. Arlington gets away with it. And they might get more than that, except that Grau, a great touch and a follow, but Nava shuts it down. Crucial save at the end. I thought they might have just stolen it, but Delaware denied instead. Overtime indeed needed to pry these two teams apart. Pry them now apart, the we need them to. Ooh. But Vixa finally puts it in. It's been a battle of Vixa. He made the saves and then he made the shots. Got embarrassed twice. Won't be thrice. Delaware take a 2-1 series lead. And that's such a brutal one. And honestly, of all the players to score, I'm very glad it is Vixa. That man had an open opportunity to shoot and he rushed it just a little bit. Just put it slightly <laughs> over the bar. And I felt so bad for him at that moment. But to see him get that goal in overtime with... Respectfully so, teammate getting a fantastic dunk on that last defender to force that kind of last-minute panic defense from Arlington. It's really good to see. And so with that game, Delaware will be going up in that series lead. And more interestingly as well, Arlington is actually going to have to sub out Adverse. So they're going to be coming into this uh, rest of the series with actually a different roster here, uh, swapping out arguably their most outstanding starting player. Yeah, for the moment, yes, but that doesn't mean uh, rotation-wise, right? Because maybe he's just mm -hmm. stealing credit uh, on the offense, right? Because <laughs> if you can rotate better, right, maybe the defense plays a bit better. But the defense was kind of solid, actually, in that in that game three. And so, I, I mean, just maybe trying to spark something, right? That's that's normally why you do something like this in, in these kind of games, right? You swap someone out because something's not working, or you just need the other guys to wake up, right? And you, you need that spark right now if you, you're UT Arlington because these one-goal games are killing you. Yeah, it's it's very interesting to watch both these teams being, I think you used the phrase, uh, Titan earlier. But both these teams mm -hmm. are very much Titans in this league. They're top of the table for a reason, and I think they're showing it off, and it took so much to tear it apart. And at the end of the day, I find that most of these games, I'd either take something really special or just a brutal mistake at the end. And I wouldn't necessarily say it falls into either of those, that last goal, but 
good pressure by Delaware, recognizing when a team is vulnerable, getting on, forcing dunks, and Vixa finishes it off. So it may not look super pretty, but at the end of the day, Delaware's getting the wins, and Arlington, they cooled off from those initial games that they were getting. I think they need to find that mix again. I think they need to clean up their movement just a tad and get back to passing. I felt like after a bit, they were kind of just throwing the ball down the field and uh, Delaware was handling it fairly well as any competent high GC SSL team would. And uh, I mean, both teams just, I, I think Delaware just a little bit stronger right now, but it's not by much. And so when UT Arlington played outstanding in game one, right? You'd expect them to continue on that way. Once Delaware was able to read them, I expected UT Arlington to switch it up, to do something different. It's not what we've seen so far. So, UTA, show us something different as game number four goes underway here. And Nanji coming in for Adverse, and they'll be getting called into action very early, and they'll answer that call fairly well. Get saved to the sideline. Now Nava and Samba combining through the middle. Samba. Getting a fake on Rain, but not quite getting around him. Deflection to the side, and a tap straight down will cause Grau to have to improv a little bit there. Nanji in the middle, will be cut out. Samba, one-on-one with Grau. Not a fun place to be, but he will get a temporary save. What a follow-up. Vixa denied. Samba handling that very well on the defensive half, and right now you gotta be frustrated if you're Delaware. That's a golden opportunity. Oh my God. Goodness, the half flip save there backwards makes the back flip save work, and then turning that back flip into the half flip, and then boosting herself just ever closer to that ball and lifting her nose high enough to be able to clear the second shot. The rebound coming in, it was so dangerous. That's the second shot that was absolutely deadly. Those normally go in, and somehow Solo was able to be saved. And Nanji on the near post. They're taking it slow, but they will get the flick over one. Rain will hold it up temporarily. Samba understands they need to pressure, and they do it well. Vixa, now off the backboard. Not the best touch by the sub, and Vixa buries that one. Vixa's going to find this one here, popping it up off the back wall, and it just touches. Oh, no, and Vixa's just going to pop it in because it's just there for the taking, isn't it? It hits off the player and just rolls down onto onto the hood. And now just about 90 seconds into the game, Delaware has the lead. It's, they might just have all the goals they need. Now it's on UTA to answer back with a goal of their own. Samba, deep hit, rain. They can't get that one. Samba takes it from a teammate and puts it wide. Now on the transition, can Grau advance it down. They'll get met by a defender, Nava. Ops on this one. They do have the follow. They do have a touch, but it will get dunked to the side. Samba's just going to clap that one deep. Nava, no touch on this. And right now, Arlington just trying to throw the ball around. I see the idea behind the passes, but none are connecting right now. This might start to boil up into some frustration if they continuously really can't find the mark on some of these connections. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I can see some some tilt come in if, uh, if there's more misses here because... You're not used to missing it. Normally, you're very consistent, right? Uh, at this rate, normally you, you you use very high intricate moves, right? High level intricate moves, and you're you're really good at them, right? You're like a, a trampolinist, right? You're you, you've <laughs> learned how to do a double, maybe even triple backflip, right? And you know how to do it very very straight. But for some reason, on the big stage right now, you you can't perform it without being slightly crooked and. Well, being slightly crooked is not perfect. It's not being straight, and because of that, it, it, it doesn't allow you to, to, to have that perfect score that you, you you normally would think of yourself as a minimum to attain as that one goes off to the post. And Delaware could have put this one away. Could have been a two-goal game. Would have made it near impossible for UTA to come back here, but still one goal game. It's 97 seconds on the clock. Nava lobs one up. We'll get a reset on this, or so I thought. Maybe he just didn't want to use that. Suspend himself in the air. Samba's going to have to slap that one up. Nanji, hit that to Samba. They can't get the touch on that. They will get the corner boost steal, so 
Delaware a little frustrated, but that demo on Samba opens up. Rain, they have an open net. They'll put it bar down. And with 74 seconds remaining, Delaware just has to hold on for dear life and Arlington will be put away. That feels like a dagger that right there. That goes bar down and in. Rolls down the post and... Oh, wow, that's how that's how close it was. But we've seen a lot of close goals uh, in this series. And I mean, Delaware playing absolutely out of their mind. Arlington are a good team, but Delaware just coming out stronger, maybe on their good day. UTA could continue doing what they did in game one here and decimate Delaware, right? But when you're a good team, right? You find a way to, to win games, even if you, even if it doesn't feel like you should be in them. But same can be said for UT Arlington here, right? It's, you're, they're not a bad team. They're a good team, and good team find ways to win games. And UTA, they breathe life. Certainly do. As Nava puts them back on the board, and they'll take that kickoff a little bit less. Ideally, it will go into their half. So. Nanji's going to have to try and work it out. But a good dunk will allow them to move up just a little bit. Samba throws their body into that play. No touch, but they will be able to get a follow up here. Nanji, quick to the challenge, but not quick enough. Off the backboard, Grau waiting for the bounce shot. They'll take a dribble instead. Rain pays with their life for slowing the play down here. Delaware content with just trying to lob this ball, waste some time and put the defense in the backboard, but they got to be careful that they're not getting punished by a very quick offense here from UT Arlington. But final 10 seconds, Samba trying to build it up. No touch here. Vixa on the air dribble. We're at zero seconds and that's gonna do it. Delaware comes back here. They've gone through some struggles, but they will come away the victors here. 3-1 over the other team in this league that is just tearing everyone apart. That is a GG, ladies and gentlemen. We have played... All seven games tonight here at uh, EGF. And that one is an amazing conclusion to have, isn't it? We had a stacked night. If you weren't here for uh, for the first few games, I highly suggest you go look at all of them. The VOD will be here for you to watch once this stream ends. I highly requ uh, request that you do watch it if you want to watch some amazing Rocket League, especially collegiate Rocket League, right? It was they they were all tight games and they were all amazing in their own right, all deserving of their spotlight tonight. And Delaware taking the show, finishing it off like a cherry on top of a beautiful Sunday. <laughs> Certainly so. And it's it's a win that is well deserved. I think that there was a lot of uh fantastic plays being worked in by both uh, rosters, but at the end of the day, Delaware was just getting it done more consistently. Arlington had, I think tight bursts of offense, but ultimately it really just wasn't coming together down the stretch. And it certainly hurts that adverse had to leave regardless of what those circumstances were as uh, coming in mid series is pretty tough, but having to replace a player is uh, kind of incremental, uh, not incremental, but a uh, foundational to the UTA offense is uh, no small feat. So uh, a tough loss there from Arlington, but they can still rest on their laurels a tad. They're still top of the table type team, but Delaware can extend that lead on them a little bit. Okay, so it was internet issues for Adverse. That's why uh, he had to be subbed out. Makes sense. It's sad to hear, but he was still playing pretty good despite those internet issues, right? But it was true that he could go invisible from time to time, right? And I'm guessing th those were the times when they needed him the most. And that's when the goals went in. And so they needed to sub him out at that point. And I can completely understand why. It, it it sucks if you're UT Arlington, right? It happens. It absolutely just happens. You hate it when it does. But at the end of the day, that's Rocket League. That's life. It's not always fair. You need to deal with that with the hand dealt to you, right? It's certainly so. And with a series like that, it's a great way to tie up this stream for yet another week of EGF Rocket League. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the stream. Please come back in the future. I've been Danger Taco. And we have had Will in production and Quantum Deathcat on the cast along with Vincent. So hopefully everyone had a fantastic evening and wish you the rest of it as fantastic as well. Good night, everyone.